What is up, everybody? Thank you, Looking Glass Knight, for the 35 bits. Oh my god, so yeah, I got the C drop last night. It took so long, I, I don't even... It was ridiculous. And now I'm trying to get it on the old account. But, uh, yeah, I think this event's gonna have a part two. That's what everyone's saying. Um, I kind of think the final boss is gonna be playable. The way he is at the end, it kind of makes you think he's not, because he's got animations, kind of like a typical enemy. But I think it's like the Kanus situation, where they're like... Intentionally not using his full move set, so I have I have a feeling he's gonna be playable, but we'll see. I know that feeling lost. I know that feeling. My uh my newbie account has gotten the CE drop twice, and I've barely played the newbie account, so you know. It's great. I don't know why I'm on this stage right now, <laughs> but uh we'll beat it real quick here. So on this account, this is my regular old account. Okay, well, I don't you. care about the currency. I, don't, I, don't, I literally care about nothing but the drop. Right? Like, and God, the volume's loud. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, this account, I don't care about the event currency. I don't care about the building stuff. I don't care about... Uh, all I care about is the event drop because I need it for, like, if I want to do a video or something. So the final boss of the main story is a saber with three health bars and actually good gimmicks but if you have like the event CE or counter clashing them you'll kill them so fast it's no big deal so I decided to solo it with Koo because the boss is a saber and not use the event CE and that was like ludicrously hard uh, and I was barely able to do it and I needed good RNG to do it so I was like I'm not gonna make a video of that it takes a bit too much RNG and uh, so I was like oh man this would be a great time because instead of using a lancer which is like horse shit I'll use someone at class neutral, and I've been wanting to make a curse arm video. So I'm like, I'll use the Dachi's curse arm, and I can finally make a good curse arm video. This will be like really hard and like good, but he's neutral instead of being a lancer, so it should work out. And then I remember that it's a four story support, and you have to bring Himiko, and I, I can't bring uh, curse arm. So, uh, yeah, that kind of sucked. I uh, beat the shit out of it with uh, Pimp, because the boss gimmick there was lots of debuffs, and she's debuff immune for three turns, and she kills him in three turns, so you know. That worked out well. But yeah, that boss was really annoying. It also really sucked because obviously you use Chin Gong to yeet Himiko, but the boss gimmick gives you extra health, and it gives extra health to Chin Gong. So Chin Gong normally won't, because he's got all this bonus health, he's like tankier than normal, and he'll normally live with like, you know, a sliver of health, but then his taunt is gone. And it's like, oh, great. That's actually the main reason why like I needed a little bit more RNG than I would have liked for, uh, for Koo to be able to solo it. I was very impressed that Koo could solo it though, because you know, getting no damage CE. Saber with like, I don't know, 450k health or some nonsense. Be nasty. What you're saying is Koo needs a buff. Yeah, definitely. I actually had to change his command codes a bit. Needed one of the debuff removal command codes. A lot of debuffs in that fight. But yeah, I think that guy might be playable. And that in that fight with him, when he does, uh, the, the giveaway to me and why I think he's probably playable is the fact that his so his NP is an EX attack instead of an NP, which you know they'll they'll do that to conceal NPs all the time. But his EX attack's animation is somewhat fancy, 
It's not like the fanciest thing I've ever seen, but it's decently fancy. And I'm like, I feel like if this was just an enemy only, his his uh, extra attack would have been a lot uh, more simplistic than that. Um, so I, I feel like they're kind of intentionally... It is one hit, that's a good point. No, I shouldn't multi-hit, but it just looks like one hit. I think it's it looks like it's one big, you know, strike. But I think it actually hits you multiple times, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, funny enough, I've, I, I fought the boss enough, I should know that, but I don't. Uh, but I thought it hit you multiple times. But anyway, the animation on it is like decently detailed. But yeah, if it only has a hit count of one, that's pretty suspicious, because extra attacks basically never have a hit count of one. Um, and that would take effort on their part to like, you know, chop up the extra attack and cut out other parts of it, so I don't think they would do that. But, um... You know, he's got a crit animation, and then he's got an attack animation, right? But they could just be, like, one of his card animations. They've done that before. Like, again, that's, uh... uh that's how uh, Canis was when you fought her, right? Like, her... Her NP was her extra attack. Her crit animation was... Uh, I think her bu buster attack. And then her, uh... Uh, every other attack was her art attack. But, it, you know, we'll see. I do like him, but I don't think I would roll for him if he was rated up, just because I think there's going to be other things, you know, in the future that I'm going to like a lot more, and I'd rather save the SQ that I have, and I just rolled on not Virgil, so I'm like, uh, not really the time for that. It's only one hit? Yeah, okay, that makes me feel less likely that he's playable. I still wouldn't rule it out completely, but that definitely... That, that's a big, uh, that's a big hit. The only way I could see that being possible is if they're using his extra attack. That's like his buster. Like, that's literally like his buster attack, and they're using it for his extra instead. And if you look at how they did Canis, they did do some tomfoolery like that. But that, that does make it seem less likely to me. But yeah, if that was his buster... And maybe his his standard attack was like his quick or something, you know, close range quick maybe. But yeah, that that's definitely less likely than I feel. That's unfortunate though because uh, he's kind of kind of pretty cool design. Did she make Gil's NP as loud as in the anime? Please no. That was so much suffering. I don't know what they were doing with that. Like they 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 dropped the the bass so hard that. I mean, you could feel the AI, right? Alright, so it doesn't really even matter what we do on this account. I think all the stages have the same drop rate on the CE. So, uh... I kind of wish I was further in the event, because... Honestly, I'd like to... I, 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 I don't know, maybe we... Let's, let's blast through and try to unlock... Let's try to unlock the main story stuff. Because I'd like to fight that boss again on stream, and I could talk about what I'm saying. Right, we could show his animations. I think he is kind of fun to solo at neutral if you're not using the event CE, so we can some, have some fun with that. I, I'm serious. I think the reason they made Aya sound like that was because they were trying to like emphasize how powerful it was, which is like, that's not how you do that. You do not measure an NP in, in the how loud the bass is, like, oh my god. But I'm, I, that's the only reason I can think of why they were that fucking stupid with it, like, holy shit. No, this is not my main, this is my ult. I actually don't even have much- I don't even know how much SQ this ult has. Yeah, I know, it's, it's 500 or whatever. And this is like my, uh... Look! There's Curse Arm! Alright, let's, um... Oh, wow. Nice Hector, by the way. I kinda wanna use that. Uh, hopefully we'll have a chance for that in a minute. Um... I don't remember what the stage drops. You know what? Let's see if Hector can solo this at neutral. This is a terrible idea, by the way, but, uh... Especially with that CE, that is not, uh... The ideal CE for this kind of thing, but, uh, we'll see how we do. Don't you have Curse Arm Grailed on in A? That's probably what I was thinking of. Just an A, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. I'm not crazy. Alright. 
Isn't this the background they used for the cabin? Well, no, it's a little different. Like in summer, summer five. I wish we had gotten better opening hands. I think we have to MP this. Oh, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, hold on. Okay, we stunned that one. I wish we could have, like, if we had killed one of these guys and then before my taunts died and then I killed one of the other ones this turn and that one was stunned, we'd be looking really good. But unfortunately, that's not how this worked. Probably more damage than I needed. Yeah, it's pretty close, actually. I'm actually worried now that we're not gonna kill this guy. If we crit, we'll be fine, but uh, man, we could have gone through this and like be at full health right now. Feels bad. Very bad RNG. I, I really blame those first two turns. Like we got just nothing. I think if we don't crit at least once, we're gonna get fucked up here. There we go. Thankfully we had an over 50% chance to crit. Yeah, I know, the C is not good. For, uh, for this, specifically. Got that damage cut, though. Come on, Buster Up! That is not Buster Up. That is quick up. Uh oh. So imagine if we had a CE that gave us damage up. Like any. Like like any damage up. Like if we had like, you know, Drunken Jolter or whatever, that would have uh we would have uh killed those. That's a, that's like a three turn difference, by the way, because I have to spend a whole turn keep killing each one of those. So I think we're fucked. Oh yeah, we're fucked. To be fair, these enemies had more health than uh, a standard wave two. Honestly, with how bad this is going, he's getting to show how decent his survivability is. Wow, he crit. And he's a freaking rider too. Uh, give me quick up, so I, I make more stars potentially. No, that that is art up. One of these days. On for real, I think he could have done this if things had gone better. Like. Just the first wave could have gone so much better if the taunt walls didn't screw us over so much. And if we had a normal CE, we would have done the second wave so much better. Like, for real, I think he can solo this. He just needs a normal CE and then to, like, get, you know, not the world's worst uh, opening two hands.
What if the one time I don't put it in the front, it, it finally gives us Buster up? It, guys, it gave us Quick Up, then it gave us Art Up. That means Buster Up is next, right? It, it's like uh, the Rice Man Challenge quest, obviously. Nope, that's uh, that's Quick Up again. That was very unfortunate. Yep, he can solo this. You, you just gotta, you know, fine tune a few things. Cause he is so close. He might still get this. We're not done yet. We get to stun next turn, and then that'll keep us from dying, and then we get to heal. I actually think he's got this. He just needs to kill her right now. Let me bust her up. Hector, I'd like to point out that you have somehow... You, you have somehow, on every turn, picked the one card type that is not applicable. Right? When we, when we were doing the Buster Quick Quick, you did Art Up. And right there, you know, we did Buster uh, Art Buster, right? And then and the, you quit, like, he's always picking the, the one thing that we don't have. I, uh... Somehow that command code has done nothing this entire run, which is saying is really saying something because Statistically we should have at least gotten a little bit out of it We might still win though because we got that heal I really liked his animations. I just wish he had more like we didn't give him a lot of animations That guy, I, fucking, that dick gets two actions, right? So I stunned the wrong one to start. I should have stunned him, because I would have skipped two of their actions. And then he crits. Good God, man. Thankfully, uh, I think we got this anyway, and we, we get another chance at uh, at finally getting Buster up. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, you know, I'll, even though it doesn't matter, uh, you know, we just, we gotta keep to a tradition here, and, uh, of, of course, you know, we get, uh, quick up. I am impressed that he beat this, though, because this went awful. First off, we had a CE that basically did nothing, because it has high starting NP, but we, we gained so much NP before we used our NP that we would have had our NP anyway, right? So we, we basically had no, that was basically a no CE solo, right? And then, uh, we got no luck when we had our taunt walls up. At all. We didn't kill a single mob, right? B big oof. Never got good luck out of our, our command code there. Uh, we got crit a lot. Like, the enemy crit us a lot. And we won anyway, so he, he's a tanky boy. I hope they buff Hector one more time. I think he's a lot better than people give him credit for. Like, I think he's a decent unit. Although, he, he does require uh, skill rank investment big time. But I do think he's, like, you know, pretty solid. Uh, but if you buff him one more time, I think he's real. By the way, I, I love this account. It, it just feels so comfy. Look, look at this chat. Look, look at this. I got, I got, I got 50 apples over a thousand, right? So uh, I don't have to even worry about it. I got all these silver apples, right? It's like no big deal. Like I'm so far, like I'm so far ahead of 800 that, you know, I, I have these 250. Like that ain't, ain't gonna happen. Like, good shit, man. Not even 2,000 apples. I know, right? You know, you know someone out there has more has more apples than me. Like, you, you know so I, I got a lot. I'm sure I'm in like the top, you know, 10 or top 100 of most apples collected in FGO, but I, there's no way I have the most. You know someone's got an old account where they've never used an apple the entire time. Like, ever. Because I've used a lot of apples on this account. Like, I've used a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, I use apples all the time on this account. Uh, there's not enough to outpace the amount that they give us, right? And so over the years, it, it, it builds up. But you know someone out there has just never, they got an alt account that has never used an apple, right? And they just have some ungodly number. Like, I can't even imagine, if you started saving apples from day one, and you only used your natural AP on like an alt account, the amount of apples that you would have at this point, which, I mean, it'd just be insanity. All right, well, if I'm wanting to 
advance the main story. We basically got to do the buildy stuff. Here, let's do this. Because I'm literally, I don't even need to do the main story in this account. I just want to advance it so we can, uh, you know, see that boss again and whatnot. I mean, hell, sometimes I don't really even use apples on lottery events on some of my accounts. I just use, the, like, on my old accounts, a lot of times I just use my natural AP every day for a lottery event. It depends. And I might use maybe a couple of apples. But you gotta remember, the lottery events, first off, they give you apples from all the free quests. And the free quests refresh every few days. And each one of them gives you a gold apple. That's a lot. And then the first 10 lotteries give you gold apples. And two silver apples. So you get 10 gold apples from that and 20 silver apples. Right? So if you're only using your natural AP and maybe a few apples here and there, you'll gain a fuckload of apples from a lottery event. Like, obviously, like, maybe on my main, I'll, I'll use more apples than I gain, but, uh, not so much on my ults. I'm not sure I'll tell you which one you have to do next. I got a CE drop on my main, I just gotta get one on this account. So you're talking about Hector, they could buff his second skill with a bit more utility or buff his third skill with guts. There's a, there's a lot of ways to buff him. I would kind of like them to just make it so he doesn't have RNG on his second skill because he has so little RNG, you might as well get rid of it. Like really, like I, I don't like it when they do that. Um, so yeah, if they would just cut the RNG on his second skill, I think that'd be fair. Um, and then maybe add even more utility to it. Or you add survivability to it. Or you just upgrade his NP. What song is this? This is High Charity from, uh, Halo 2. It's a decent- it's quite a long song, so if you only like, like, that last bit, it's kind of far into the song. Halo 2 has a really good soundtrack, though. It's, I think it's the best of all the Halo games, I would say. There's plenty of good songs, though, in the early Halo games, but, uh, I really like that one. Okay, let's see what we're doing here. Might as well have some fun with this. You know what? Fuck it. Melt solo, why not? Got the disgusting buff on JP. Alright, the Hector does have a buff to MP, doesn't he? Excuse me, it's, it's Romulus that doesn't. I am conflating my three-star AoE Lancers. Well, they could always buff it again. They can hit really fucking hard. That's, they did all of this fight. I think she gets her MP when you break one of her health bars, or something. Well, getting way better luck than, uh, Hector did. That, like, ouch sound effect from Nobu is just hilarious. Like, it's so goofy, and that's like her supposedly most serious form, right? Like a very goofy laugh. Like very goofy. Like it, like it came out and she didn't even intend for it to come out, is what it sounds like. I'm not gonna lie, I actually think she's basically a giant Shune. Like seriously, they want you to think she's super serious and badass and everything, but when you really think about what she's wearing, like her drinking out of the, the skull, the the lat, she's literally like Mama Chune, right? 
Cause I mean, she's still Nobu. Like, like seriously, when you look at her voice lines, I mean, she's still fucking Nobu, right? It's like, she's just a giant fucking Chune. It's kind of amazing. All right, got NP coming our way here. Yeah, I wasn't really sure how the bar broke, bar break worked here. Oh, right. It's Nobu. Um, Gut CE would, uh... Gut CE would have, would have been really good for that. Oops! Right, she, uh, removes defensive buffs. Uh, don't think she can remove Guts, though. You actually wouldn't even need a Gut CE. Gut CE is good because you can't remove CE effects. But Guts in general would have been really good there because uh, I don't think she removes Guts, she just removes like defense, uh, evade, uh, invulnerability, those kinds of things. Shame Rex wasn't here for that. Hey, we, we weren't talking shit, we were talking the truth. Berserker would be too easy. Like, Beowulf would be way too easy, because he gets the counterclass damage. I don't want to use someone in neutral. Hmm. So, Ku could do this really easy, but what, I wonder if Proto Ku could. Like, Ku would have this no problem. He has built-in guts, I mean, and Ku is just so good. I mean, like, no problem. But, but Proto Ku... Let's at least give him some command codes here. He doesn't, uh, have any right now. Blood Axe? Well, he is a Berserker, but he is AoE in a low star, so maybe we can justify that. Is this a beast? Unfortunately, no. Speaking of, uh, Blood Axe... I don't think I have another Grail on me right now. So if I beat this event on this account, that I, I should I should do that because it'll be the last Grail to get him to 100. Then I'm gonna start Grailing Babbage on this account, which I am so excited for. Check my all. Okay, give me a minute. Yeah, I, I've, I've been wanting- honestly, I've been wanting to Grail Babbage for so long. The main reason why I kind of didn't was because Max has Grail Babbage. And I felt like I would never catch up with that. But I'm kind of like, I need to just- I need to just Grail the man. He's- he's awesome. Who the hell did I get my command codes to? I can't remember what I last did on this account. Uh, clearly it was something Gwen related because, uh, he's a bit stacked there. Not too surprising though, my Gwen is kind of the, the best thing on this account. He is so good. Honestly, for like, other than like, you know, Lubu and Mori, right? Uh, Katsuku and Babbage are kind of your, your go-to options for uh, single target caster for budget, even though they're not single target. I'm gonna give him some like placeholder stuff here. Can't have my uh going up without at least something. Hmm. I mean, that's so crappy, but <laughs> whatever. Blood actually probably beat the boss too easy, to be honest, because he has built-in guts and 
BBB chains will just rip her health apart on a on a berserker. Yeah, BC Braun's a lot better now than he was for that kind of thing. Before, it was almost entirely about his utility. Because uh, it's a legitimate boon to be able to get your NP that easily, right? That's, that's, uh, that's pretty handy. What, it, what would really help is if he had a survivability skill, because that's what you really want out of your, your DPS on a budget account, is uh, just them to be really self-reliant like that. I like how this account and my main account got Kiara, by the way, because this account got her too. It's so fucking stupid. This account actually got Brunhilder though, so there, at least there was that. Although I, I, it got Kiara first, but uh... that actually is right to use uh, Anniversary Blonde on him every once in a while. God, Anniversary Blonde is so good for Hijikata. That's like, like, that is just, that is his shit right there. Because you get to make sure you're going to crit with all this stuff, so that's big. You don't want to be low in health of it not crit, right? And then you can do, you know, the guts canceling the enemy turn thing, and he has his own guts now, and like, it's so good. I honestly think Hijikata with Anniversary Blonde is one of those, it's just, he's so good now. And he already was. I mean, for real, he could solo bosses that were like, you know, not just a meme, it was like, oh yeah, this is a really tough boss and it's really handy if you can just beat it with Hijikata, right? Uh, now, now he's even better at that kind of thing. And he's even better on a team. Hmm. Trying to think about Art Chain or not. I'm thinking not. Really, though? I think I'm gonna get my NP in time without it, though. But I could NP literally next turn, but then I probably won't have a quick chain. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, uh, more so because I don't- that's so RNG that you could never reliably get that, so I'll just pretend I didn't get that good of a hand. And then it really- I'm, I'm not sure if it's worth it or not, so... Well, I, uh, I should have done it. I could literally NP quick quick like normal. Like that, that's perfect. I could, I could have, I could have, uh, gotten my NP right there and done NP quick quick like normal, then George would be dead and I'd get crits next turn. But again, that's so rare. Like, that's so rare. I, I, I'm fine doing without that. that. That's some bullshit good luck right there. I didn't give him a gut CE. What am I doing? I, I, if, I literally have to give him a gut CE if, if I want to live, right? I don't, know, I don't know why I forgot about that. Oops. I mean, theoretically, we might be able to win anyway, but I doubt it. <laughs> we haven't thrown yet, but we probably threw. What really is going to hurt us is because if I was going to play that way, I should have like made sure I didn't cast protection from arrows until later, so I still had the defense up. Well, I guess we'd lose the defense up too, so it doesn't really matter then. Yeah, we're just in a, uh, in a bad spot no matter what, really. It's funny too, because Kotoku works decently well with the Guts DE. So you cut crit out on it, right? So we have to either face tank this, or we have to kill her right now. Now, I can re-roll my crit stars, which actually I think I'm going to do that, because I didn't really get the crits that I wanted there. What? I excuse me. 
Uh, it, it. We, we have a crit skill, by the way. Did you know that? How did we just... How did I just miss... All the crits. Like, all of them. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm, uh... I'm gonna get a gut CE now. That was one of the least satisfying turns... Like, ever. I remember that time Massage hit a 90 and 80% crit and they both failed. That was nice. Well, if you think about it, Guts doesn't defend you in any way. It doesn't. It doesn't prevent you from taking damage. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't lower the damage. It doesn't defend you. You just come back to life for when you're dead, right? Which is obviously nice, but it does. It's not. It's not really defensive. It's more like a. I'm back. Right? Hey, look, we got an art chain again, and this time I basically have to take it. But, uh, this time we're probably not gonna get a quick chain. Also, because we don't have starting in P, uh, we're not gonna have our thing anyway. How about 12 guts, I know, right? But yeah, it, it honestly is pretty accurate. Because, like, you know, the way Bulg is, it's really hard to defend against. And But God Hand works, because God Hand's not stopping. God Hand does not stop Bulg from hitting Hercules in the heart. It doesn't stop any of that stuff, right? The, the causality effect reverse still happens. It plays out just like normal, does the bonus damage based on how tanky Herc is, all that stuff still happens, right? It's just, oh, by the way, I, I, I come back, right? So that, that's why God Hand is like, you know, really good. Because you don't need to block something, right? That's the thing, Bulk is basically unblockable, but you don't need to block it because you just, you have another life. I'm not going to get my NP this turn no matter what, which super sucks. But even if I do Art Buster quick, I don't think it's enough. Why did George have to take so many cards? Yeah, they even name God Hand as one of the best ways of dealing with Bold. Like in his character material, when they're explaining all these like bullshit hack stuff it does, it's like, you know. It doesn't matter if you've got the world's best shield, you know, it, the, the, the whole point, like, uh, so many people don't understand what cause-effect reversal means, and they act like when they're talking about, like, you know, this or that versus bold, they're like, oh, this could defend against it. It's like, no, you can't, you can't defend against it, because there's no, like, the, 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 the event happens before the, the cause, right? Your heart just gets pierced, right? It's just, like, too bad, right? Uh, but when you're hurt, you don't care. I mean, I guess you care somewhat, you know, you don't want to lose a life just cause, but, uh... Overall, it's not that bad. Hmm... Hey, Zerp. I think she's going to get her NP here because more time went by this time. I could actually break this health bar decently reasonably if I get one crit. If I do my crit up and I do Buster Quick Buster and one of them crits, I'll probably break without using my NP. But if I don't crit, then we're not going to break and it's like the worst thing ever. I think we just go for the NP then. I don't know though, 40, 50, 50, that's overwhelmingly in my favor, but um... 
That, that, that could be said the last time I tried to crit. It was actually even more in my favor. Proku, would you like to have an upgraded MP? You know, that, that would be that would be swell. Can you imagine that having a nice little like you know extra damage on that? And maybe 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 sure hit, right? That might be kind of lore accurate, you know? Shame they never gave that to Bulg or anything, right? It's really unfortunate that we had a massive amount of debuff resistance and we did we still didn't resist the debuff. Thankfully she doesn't have any other debuffs, so it's not that big of a deal, but uh still kind of annoying. Alright, 70, 80, 70. Okay. Three crits would have been nice, but I'll pick two. Just quick charge feels bad. Now she will cast invulnerability if she gets low on health and you don't kill her. So I almost want to attack her and not MP and then try to like finish her off all in one go. But I think I'm gonna get her low. I think she'll do it at 50% life. So do I? I think I don't quick chain then. I think I bust her MP buster and hope I kill her right now. Oh, this is uh, this is rough. I'm gonna re-roll this. Slightly better. You know, if if um if Proto Coup had an upgraded NP like regular Coup, uh, we would probably kill here. Also, regular Coup has a higher attack stat, so he does more damage as well. He also has an attack buff, and you know another guts, and he removes debuffs on his own. It's almost like he's slightly better or something. Just crit forehead. Okay, we're fucked. Oh yeah, she has defense up too. You know what? I think I should have done like quick. I should have a uh, quick art art or something stupid like that. I'm sorry, uh, art quick quick. I think that would have kept her from being so low. Oh, never mind. Got her. Um, I was gonna say I think we could have kept her from getting low enough to cast invulnerability. The uh, second buster bailed us out there. Uh, I'll take that. That's nice though, because it had the command code, it had the defense down, it had the first card buster bonus, it had his crit bonus, all that stuff. That was close. Dude, he could be such a fun servant, man, if they would buff him. Like, they need to buff his MP, but then he needs a little bit beyond that, right? Because before, before either of the coups got buffed, uh, or Protoku had his first buff, you know, his uh, third skill buff, and then Ku had no buffs. Ku was still better, right? And then now Ku's been buffed twice, so Protoku kind of needs to be get the one buff that Ku got, and then something else to, you know, really kind of offset that original disparity, which I guess is even bigger now because then Ku got the attack buff. But honestly, I don't think Protoku is ever going to be better than regular Ku at this point. But uh, if he could just be like, you know, up there. That would be nice, and he should. De he definitely needs to be where he's always better than Ku if you're fighting a beast. But what's sad is that's not always the case now. Like, uh, it's Ku's, you know, second buff just put him so far ahead. The funny thing is, Emiya was fucked. I don't know why so many people think that's like a tie. That fight is not a tie. Emiya lost, and he even admits it. Like he lost. Because, one, Ku wasn't even going all out. Like, he was going closer to all out, but Ku didn't use his runes to buff up his NP, right? Which he can do, which would make his NP a higher rank, and then Emiya wouldn't even be able to block it. But, like, watch the fight. I mean, in, in the visual novel, and the anime, it's the same. Uh, Emiya is fucked, right? Yeah, he survived, and it says... Uh, the fact that Emiya survived, you know, soaring uh, death is saying a lot, because generally in that kind of situation, you would not be able to survive that. But he did, but he was completely foobar. Ku was fine. Ku didn't have a scratch on him. Like, Ku was, you know, he could keep going. And, you know, Ku just, you know, kind of figured out what was going on, and, and then just so he just left. Um, but if, if Ku had wanted to keep fighting, I mean, Emiya was done. You know, Emiya was, was foobar there, and Ku was, you know, a spring chicken. And again, Ku could have just used his runes, and he would have made his uh, MP even stronger. 
And basically, Ku figured out what Emiya was doing, and he wanted to let Emiya kill Caster and all that nonsense. But yeah, if that if they had kept fighting, uh, Emiya was done. Like <laughs> he he was done. So. But the thing is, most, because of, like, the unique nature of, like, how Death Flight works and everything, most, like, brute force shields like that aren't going to do so good, right? So the fact that Emio was able to do that is, you know, it's pretty rare. And obviously Avalon would work, but Avalon is, you know, LOL, I'm not even in this dimension, see a, see a sucker, right? So, uh, uh not, not exactly the same thing. Who shall we use for this? A nice week to pre- Okay, you know what? I think I'm using Orion, but that's just- that's too much. That's counterclassing, and then that's just... Like, that- that's just silly. I I've always said, like, it's really hard to say if Avalon would work on the cause-effect reversal. In my opinion... I would say if you cast Avalon first, you would be fine because it wouldn't even it wouldn't be able to target you. It, it, it literally can't even target you. You're not there, right? There's nothing to target, right? And, and, and uh, so if if you cast Avalon first, you're totally fine. If you cast it after he said Bolg, then I actually don't think it would work because your heart. This is what people don't understand. It your your heart is already pierced, right? The second he says Bolg, your heart is already pierced. You know everything else that takes place after it. It is literally a formality. That's literally how they word it. It's a formality. It doesn't matter. That's why even even going back in time doesn't save you because it. Uh, so if if you cast it after the fact, I think it would not save you, and because you, you, your heart's already been hit and it's it's too late, right? But if you cast Avalon first, Bulg wouldn't even work. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't work. It couldn't it couldn't get to the the target at that point. Like it doesn't need to get to you if you use Bulg first because it already got to you. That's the thing. Like it doesn't matter that like. In terms of visually, it didn't get to you, but your your heart has already been hit uh, before you you, you know beforehand. That's why it's you know cause effect reversal. But if while he's casting it, you cast Avalon, uh, it, it wouldn't he wouldn't be able to like he could he couldn't even finish casting it. it. It even says that like if you try to use Bolg on a rock, it doesn't work because it, a rock doesn't have a heart or a core or anything like it, right? So it, like it just fails. And with Avalon, you're you're not. Even though you can be seen, you're not actually there. You're you're off in the land of the fairies while you're in it, right? So it's like there, there's no way. Like there, Bolg would definitely not work if uh, uh, if you, if you uh, if you cast it after. Like if you um, I will say they're really inconsistent though with like uh, how long it takes to use Avalon and everything. So it, it gets pretty silly. But you know, welcome to anime and and, and all that. So. I mean, the reason uh, Artoria survives their first encounter is because it doesn't hit her in the heart, it hits her in the chest. And it's because if you get really lucky, it's like, it's so rare, if you read the character material for Bulg, Bulg and everything, just having high luck is not enough. Like, it, having high luck does not mean Bulg misses you. Ku has actually never seen Bulg fail ever, right? Um... You have to have high luck and then get lucky, right? And that's what happened. And that's also why the the uh, bridge series makes fun of it. Uh, that that scene. Uh, yeah, but it's literally just RNG. You have to get really, really. It's like a one in a million thing. And then if you have high luck, it's going to be less than that. But it's like it's never happened before. And Artoria just lucked out, and it just randomly hit her in the chest instead of the heart, uh, which still fucked her up, right? Like she was in bad shape after that. But you know, uh, it's a. It's a lot better to get, you know, s you know, smacked in the, the chest than getting smacked in the heart because uh, the heart one will kill you. Uh, oh, by the way, I love this in the, uh, in the Ufotable anime because, of course, they did this. They try to make it look like she somehow outskilled it and somehow skilled her way out of a cause-effect reversal, even though that's... I, I, I hate, do foldable just drives me nuts because they just can't stop doing stuff like that, right? Because like, what they always do... And they do this on purpose. This is very calculated, right? They, what they do is they're not actually saying, like, they don't break what's actually there. Like, for example, when when Ku fights Emiya, they don't have Ku say something that actually contradicts the, the visual novel, right? Like, in the visual novel, he just straight up says, yeah, I have a command spell on me. 
that, uh, you know, the first time I fight somebody, I always have to hold back, right? And they, they even do a quick flashback showing Kotomine casting the command spell, so you know exactly what it is. But in the anime, they just have him say, oh yeah, I was holding back because of my master. That, that's technically true, right? Like, like what Ku just said in the anime is accurate to the circumstance. He's having to hold back because of his master. But the way they had him say it makes it sound like he was only holding back for that fight, not for all the other, you know, first encounters he's had, right? And they do that so people that have read the visual novel won't even think about it. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he said he's holding back, right? That's implying, you know, when, you know the, the command spell from Kotomine and all that, right? So you don't even think about it. But then someone that only watches the anime then thinks it's, oh, he's only, he was only holding back that one time against Emiya. They do the same shit with Ortoria all the time. Like, they do stuff that's not technically contradicting, like, what's in the original story, but they, in, they say it in a way, or imply it in a way, that it's going to be misleading to somebody that hasn't seen the source material, and they're going to think something else. I, so many people only watch the anime, and they think Artoria, like, outskills Bulk somehow, and doesn't get hit by the, uh, you know, cause-effect reversal or some shit, right? That's not what happened! She just got really lucky, and it didn't fucking, hit, you know, hit her, and, and they make that really obvious in, you know, the, the, all the other stuff, but in, in Euphotable's anime, they, they make it really unclear, and they kind of try to imply that, you know, she somehow outskilled her way out of it. It's just, it's so stupid. That drives me crazy that they always do stuff like that. Because, it, 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 I would honestly mind it less if they just, like, changed it for the anime. It was like, yep, we're doing it this way, right? Because then it's such an obvious contradiction. But, like, they do it in a way where, you know, the hardcore fans don't even notice because they're like, oh yeah, that's implying the thing from the thing, right? But they don't think about it, what it's like to watch that from, like, a first-timer's perspective. Kojiro literally fights, like, every servant at some point uh, in the different timelines. He's fought e every single servant, and he drove all of them off. I think maybe except for Ku. I can't remember if Ku ever fought him or not. I know Ku has witnessed him and said he didn't really want to deal with that. But I don't remember if he had a brief run-in before that and then, you know, backed off. I don't, I don't remember. But uh, he's pretty much fought everybody, though, and made all of them retreat. Because they're like, what the fuck is going on? Why did Kodamine nerf Ku? Because uh, Kodamine doesn't want Ku to be successful because he has Gilgamesh. It, it, and it actually makes sense. Literally, from Kodamine's perspective, it makes complete sense, right? Because first off, Kodamine knows Gilgamesh decently well, and you know he doesn't want to mess with Gilgamesh's plans, right? You don't, you don't want, you don't want. Like, can you imagine if Ku killed Artoria? That, that's that's not in Gilgamesh's plan here, right? Like, so that you, you don't want shit like that. So, and then in turn, the the thing that Kodamine is most worried about is like some bullshit weird nonsense. So he wants a scout, right? He literally just wants a scout to kind of just know what's out there and, 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 you know, know if there's some, you know, shenanigans or something, right? He doesn't need Ku to do literally any fighting for him because he has Gilgamesh, right? So what does he care, right? So he literally uses Ku as a glorified scout because uh, it's actually against Kodumine's best interest to have Ku running around killing people, right? Uh, so that's why he put that he, uh, command spell on him so Ku doesn't, you know, uh, fuck anything up. Uh, and obviously that works out very poorly for Ku, but another thing is he wants Ku to die. Not only does he not want Ku to be successful, he wants Ku to die because it's necessary to, to summon the Grail. Like, literally their plan is, because what, um, what Gilgamesh wants, in, in, in terms of what uh, Kodamine wants, because Kodamine actually likes having a face, um, is, is Gilgamesh wants everyone to die but uh, Artoria. And normally there can only be one servant left, right? But because Gil doesn't count towards this set of servants, there can be two servants left. But it has to be Gil plus one other, right? It can't, it can't be like Ku and Artoria. It has to be specifically Gil plus one other because Gil's the one that doesn't count. So if, 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 if Ku lives, he's taking up that sloth, right? That's, that's bad. Uh, he, they, they want Ku to die, right? They need Ku to die and Artoria not to die uh, and then everyone else to die. That's basically the plan. And that's why when... Uh, you know, uh, Gil basically says he was going to kill Ku anyway if, 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 you know, it came down to this because, you know, Ku's not, you know, he's taking up a slot and they need the Grail to appear. And it, Gil's not going to kill Artoria, right? Gil's not going to kill Artoria to make the Grail appear, so obviously, uh... So yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it sucks for Ku, but from Konamine's perspective, it makes complete sense. Keeps Gil happy, follows the plan, gets the Grail summoned, like, literally hits all the check boxes and you get a, a free scout out of it, right? So, might as well, right? The only risk he was taking, uh... 
is, you know, basically if Ku finds out and Ku kills him, which is basically what happens in Unlimited Blade Works, but, uh, you know, there's always some kind of risk, so what are you gonna do? I'd like to point out that the internet uses simp uh, way too much, and it's gotten to the point where it's just dumb. Uh, like, it's really dumb, and if you think about it, Gil is literally the opposite of a simp, because he is literally trying to manhandle Artoria into marrying him, which is obviously not a good way to do that, by the way. Uh, this is, the, the, these uh, actions are not endorsed by Green Incorporated. But that is about as far away as a simp as you can get. Like, somewhere between Artoria being, uh, you know, face-planted and hung upside down, I don't think she was thinking, wow, this guy is a total simp. I think she was more thinking of, I would like to kill this man. Alright, what are we going to use here? There we go. It's neutral, uh, but he's good, and, uh, you know... One of the stronger things on my account. Also, doesn't have any command codes right now. Feels bad, but I'm too lazy to switch that. Hell, is doing all vanilla solo. It's fine. The thing is, you wouldn't have... It doesn't work that way. First off, the Grail doesn't necessarily always go to the root, right? It's That's more of like what they wanted to use its power for, right? So some of the different objective would be used for something else. Um, but it, it doesn't really work that way. It's not... It's The, the, the servants are literally just mana. Right, and, if you had, and just like how Gil wasn't connected to that Grail War, so it wouldn't matter. Like, the Grail wouldn't uh, 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 have done anything with him anyway. Um, like, it was, you don't need that much mana. So, like, it's not like, how do I put this? You, you can't, you, you, you can't kill someone with a train twice, right? If you run someone over with a train, they, they only died the one time. It's not like, oh, guys, we ran him over with two trains, now he's super dead, right? It doesn't work that way. So I almost autopilot clicked taunt there, which, uh, that'd have been bad. It's not even a joke when you say plot armor is like the strongest noble phantasm. It, it really is. I mean, ultimately what the writer wants to have happen will happen, right? And we'll just make up an excuse for it, right? Like... The writer gets to dictate everything, and like the main character is not going to not do what the main character is intended to do, right? <laughs> Wish we could have killed that other Nobu last turn, but it only got like the one card, so. I'm assuming those guys are basically like from that uh, division or whatever. That's why they're wearing the coat, I'm assuming. Yeah, Gil probably. I don't know if he would hate Salter, like if we're talking canonical here instead of jokes. Um, but like the whole thing he found interesting about her is gone in, in her alter form. So he probably wouldn't care very much. I don't know if you necessarily hate her. He's just like, well, this is boring. The thing is, in Iron Blooded Orphans, that was a plan from the be like. Well, it wasn't it, the plan from the beginning was slightly different. They ended up changing it, but uh, they actually wanted to kill everyone instead of just a few people. But um, you know, the, the the that was that was. It's kind of like okay, Lelouch was kind of intended to die for in, for in the first place in Code Geass, right? But it doesn't happen. It does The first time Lelouch gets in danger, it's not like he's gonna die, right? That's not the appointed time, right? So there's plenty of plot armor up to that point, and it's the same in Iron Blooded Orphans. You know, they're not gonna die unceremoniously, right? It doesn't. It doesn't happen randomly. It's what they're building up to, and it, you know, it's like that's like the whole thing, right? So it happens at a very specific time that that the, the story was laying the groundwork for. So it's still plot armor, right? Like, ultimately, stories are contrived. That's just that's just how it is, right? A story is a, a contrived thing. Uh, unless you're, you know, like, telling history or something, but that's not the same thing. Um, and and the, the good storytelling, though, tries to make it seem natural so you don't realize it's contrived, right? That's the thing. Plot armor is more like when it's really obvious, you know, it's so noticeable. You, you, you weren't doing your... 
your storytelling smooth enough that you know the the logical inconsistencies or something are are so obvious that like how things play out it's kind of it's so it's so clear that the the writer's having to like force something or you know just like this is just following a, a plan or whatever. <laughs> Hmm. So I can use my third skill and then get my extra overcharge, and then I'll still have, I'll waste the battery, I'll have the NP gain effect for the quick, quick part. And I actually need to do some pretty nice damage here. Do I need to do that much damage here? I mean, maybe. Okay, fuck it, I'm doing it. You know that what's his name Loke or whatever? I don't I don't even know why he gets so much hate. I don't think he's like an amazing character or anything. But like I am fucking shit. So I just missed a 50% chance to crit and a 90% chance to crit. Um uh we would have killed that guy by the way cuz we had uh we had, uh, you know, quick up and crit up, so those crits would have given me a lot more NP gain. That guy would have died. I wouldn't have taken so much damage. Holy shit! And I, I, I uh, good God. Anyway, I don't know why that character gets so much hate because, like, he's supposed to be an antagonist and he's supposed to be, you know, kind of like he's, he's kind of like, you know, Patrick Colasauer from Double O, right? And but the thing is, it's like most of the reasons he gets saved aren't really plot armor. I mean, they are to a degree, because obviously he made sure things would, you know, be in set up so he would be saved by, by his men and things like that. But, it, like, it, it, all the things make sense, right? And then, you know, he does die in the end. And, like, I don't, I don't, I don't really get why that character just gets a lot of hate, though, because it's, like, he's not really any different than a lot of characters they've had in the past. And a lot of those characters end up being liked. And, you know, he is an antagonist. So it's, like, of course he's going to do things that are, are bad for the... The, the protagonist, so like I, I don't I, I don't really get it. Like I don't really hype the character either, but like he doesn't do or anything that's that big of a deal. Like it's not like he does some big offense like, oh my god, this is such a bad character. Like I mean he's kinda just you know, like with the family he grew up in and everything, he's kinda what you would expect. Like of course he's gonna be spoiled and and, and not very skilled and all these things, which is how he is. But then all these men always save him because they're really loyal to the family, which is what you would expect. So it's like I don't get it. That's one of the most hated characters I've ever seen in Gundam, and it's like, I, I, I literally don't get why. Like, he certainly, I don't, I wouldn't see much reason for him to be a, a fan favorite character, either, which he's obviously not, but like, I, I don't really get the insane amount of hate that character gets. Cause yeah, it's like, he's a villain, and like, his side isn't really even evil, but he's unaware of any of that, right? Like, the side he's on... You know, it's actually, his goal is like, you know, peace and whatnot, right? But like, he's unaware of any of that, and so he's kind of like a tool. And he's out for his own, you know, his own gain. So he's probably one of the most antagonist antagonists, or bad antagonists in the series, but, I mean, that's fine. Like, why, why, why would you, why would he not be that? I, I, I don't really get it. I guess people don't like an antagonist that causes problems, it's also incompetent, I guess. But it's not like the show ever... Like, tries to make him seem competent or anything, right? He's supposed to be incompetent because he's spoiled. And, uh, you know, he mostly just uses his money to get things done, which is kind of what you... Like, he, he's a, like... You're not supposed to really like him, but I just so many people act like he's a terrible character, and, like... I, I just don't get it. I, it's, he's, the amount of hate for that character is just so disproportionate, in my opinion. He does, he does make an ass out of things, that's certainly true. But again, that, that was that was kind of the point, you know, being antagonist. Because I, I, it's funny, I had not seen. I remember before I saw the show. I remember I had I had seen like just through you know random things that people absolutely hated that character, but I didn't know why. So I kind of went into it already knowing people super hated this character, and I was kind of expecting you to be like, oh, that's why. And I, I never got that. I'm like, I, I literally don't get why people are, hate this character so much. Oh yeah, my Achilles is not Bon Ten yet. I keep forgetting that. That kind of sucks.
Wait, who liked the blonde guy? I literally- I, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Like, the only blonde guy I can think of is McGillis. And I don't remember anybody liking him other than... Oh, the purple haired chick, right. The... whatever her name was. Yeah, she liked him. But no, they're not from the same family, no. Yeah, I was very confused for a second there. But I don't blame you because uh, some of the names in that show are very hard to remember. Yeah, he's, he's from a completely different family, and he's like the only like heir. So I'm pretty sure these statues are, are like are on the map based on when they died, like the order in which they died. Like so, the closer they are to the city, the later they died. And like the closest that the game will allow them to be is the wall. So like all all those four all went like the maximum duration, right? Um. And yeah, and, and by this, you can just see how quickly this one died. It died immediately. Like, that, that one was dead before I even woke up. Like, when I woke up, that one was already dead. I think this one was already dead, too. Um, this one was already already dead or almost already dead. I don't quite remember. But all the other ones were still alive. But yeah, this one died so goddamn quickly. I actually don't think you have to do the finish them off stage to complete- to continue the main story. I mean, we'll, we'll obviously do it, but we'll do it in later. Okay, that voice line's getting pretty annoying. How did the- Like- why did they not record more voice lines for when you complete a mission? That was, uh... Interesting. Actually, maybe we do. Normally, like... N normally, if one of these is story-related, it'll tell you which one is. And it's not saying that for any of them, so maybe I do have to do these. Or maybe I have to do a few of these. By the way, I one-shot this one on turn one with Koo. That was rather satisfying. None of these are actually fun enough to fight. They only have like 200k health, so it's like... Who gives a shit? They don't drop anything either, so like, it doesn't even matter what you summon. Just with bond bonus. I think she has two lines. And we just got unlucky there, but it, it, uh, I'm not sure. I've never actually really needed eggs because a lot of the early characters that required them I didn't really care for. And they've given out plenty of free eggs, uh, right? And the thing is if you did want like... If you did want all the characters that used eggs early on, and because you had no stockpile of them, then they're a problem, obviously. But in the long run, eggs are going to end up just being like hearts and every other gold mat, and they're not going to be an issue. But it's, considering they just haven't been in the game that long, you know, a lot of people have like a backlog of things that need them. I like eggs fried or scrambled, really. More of uh, what I'm in the mood for, I would say. Eggs are just good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were Lost Belt uh, 4. And another reason it was kind of rough is because when they added them, they didn't, um, they didn't put, an, they didn't have an event where they were available right away. It's very common when they add a new mat that the next major event, like it's not a rerun, will have the new mat. But they didn't do that for eggs. It took a while for any event to actually give eggs. And that gave people more time to acquire more servants that required eggs, and so people just have like a backlog. But yeah, for me, I've never actually farmed eggs ever, not even once, and I have more eggs than I'll probably ever need, because of most of the early servants that used them, I either didn't get or didn't uh, try to get or, or whatever. By the time I got any that did use them, I already had a backlog of them, because they had given them away for free. Work days tomorrow, got an exam tomorrow as well, feels bad. That sucks. Well, hopefully you can get the exam over with real quick, and then you can, you know, have the rest of the day, you know. But happy birthday! 
Hopefully you get some good food out of it. I feel like... Dude, I, I just- I never thought about this, but I, it must be really annoying for like people that really like like going out for their birthday and stuff during the pandemic, right? Like if you've got like a favorite place you want to go to and whatnot, but it's, you know, not exactly the right time to do that right now, so a lot of people probably aren't getting to do that. What I would say, if I was like a family guy, right, and I had kids and stuff, and you know, my kids like celebrating their birthdays and stuff, what I would do is, I would, you know, do what I could, you know, at home or what have you, but then I'd tell them, like, you know, when this is over, then, you know, we're gonna have, like, a second birthday for everybody, right? Like, that that's what I would do. So then you get to have, like, you know, good times, uh, later. And then you get to look forward to that, and then you get to have two birthdays, right? So that's not so bad. The, the bad part is when... Th this goes on for, you know, over a year, and you have a- you have three birthdays, right? <laughs> then that's a bit much, but you, you know, you still try to do as best you can, you know, at home or whatever, but, uh... It's funny, I don't care about my birthday, like, at all, but if I had kids, and- unless they told me that they didn't care, I- I, I would do my, my best to make sure they had a good time on the- like, that's, you know... Like, of course. Like, just because I don't care doesn't mean the kids don't care, right? Like, you, you gotta have the right mindset about these things. I would not name my kid Koo, Jesus Christ. But I would probably- if I- if I was gonna name a kid, I would probably try to name them something that's unique, but then it also would fit in just fine, right? You try- you know, that's what I would go for. Like, it's nothing that would, you know, stand out or, or get them in trouble or teased or anything like that, but then you want to go with something, you know, interesting, I guess, to a degree, but nothing too fancy. But sometimes, you know, simple names are fine, like a lot of the- like the generic basic names are- Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I'm not naming a kid Green Knight. Although Green Green is a you know a fine last name or middle name, but you, you wouldn't want that for a first name. Also, I'm a big advocate for you give your kid a really good middle name, so if they don't like their first name, they can you know use that instead. Lo loads of people go by their middle name instead of their first name. That's actually not that rare. Uh, I go by my, my middle name instead of my first name for crying out loud. Uh, so you, you give give your kid like good options, right? So if they don't like their first name, they get another another option, right? Okay, let's see. What are, what am I doing right now? Oh yeah, the raids. It like just don't it doesn't matter what I bring at all. Achilles is so famous, I doubt anyone's gonna name their kid that. Like, it's so, like, honestly, naming people after, like, Greek things and stuff isn't that rare, but you don't go with Hercules or Achilles or any of that. I also like how there's an, a, a never-ending debate which who was, like, the more famous hero, Achilles or Hercules. Uh, for what, definitely, in my opinion, from the research I've done, and they're, like, back in the day, it was definitely Hercules, but Achilles has definitely done very well in modern times. I know a guy named Achilles, Jesus. See, if you, you, you sh if you, that, if you're gonna name your son after that, you would go with Kanos, not Canis, because Canis is a female name, right? And that's why the name changes. Wow, named Vishnu. That's pretty big. I just clicked the wrong button, but thankfully the sun's here, so it didn't matter. Like, I don't have a single single- I don't- I'm not using a single single target character right now. Oh, this thing NP drained, didn't it? Oh my- chat- oh no, I have to actually, like, play the game now. Oh no. I have to, like, you know, vaguely care about mechanics or something. I have to click buttons. Yeah, I forgot this one, uh, did that. That means that I kind of just wasted my buffs, and I'm probably not gonna get my MP. And so all those buffs are not gonna really do anything. Wayne doing a lot of damage anyway, though. No event bonus, no event CE, not counterclassing, just vanilla smack smack, uh, no crits either, and doing all that damage. So I, uh, I can do this. I forgot that we had that. 
I do find it funny though how many like challenge quests, three turn setups are basically designed to not play the game. That's literally what it is. You're trying to kill the boss so fast you don't have to actually respect or interact with the boss mechanics. And you don't have to make like decisions with like, you know, do I focus on MP gain this turn or damage or Sargent or a mix of the two and like who's the boss gonna attack? Do I have enough health? Do I heal not? Like you don't have to do any of that. Like that's like, that's like the whole point of a lot of three turns is to like minimize the amount of like effort that is required. Please shoot Scatty in the face. That's not Scatty. Oh, excuse me, I killed the music. Whoops. Oh my god, we got an egg. And we don't need it. This account probably needs them even less. Wow, it takes so long to be able to move the screen again. This one will be easy. I should literally bring a single target servant though, that would make this a lot easier. Dude, the game this song is from, it's called The Vagrant. I absolutely hate the character design for the main character in that game. Like, I absolutely, it looks awful. And no, I'm not trying to insult the artist or anything, right? It's just not my style times a patrillion, right? Um, but that game actually had really good gameplay. Like, it, it was a surprisingly good game in terms of gameplay, but oh my god. I hate the design of the main character in that. I, I guess they look like a vagrant, but it's a she, and they just have- it's like the over-the-top, like, Amazon look, and it's like... Like, just- the design is just... It's awful. And, and it's unfortunate because the character designs for, like, almost everyone else in the game is fine. And the art style is actually quite nice. And, like, a lot of the enemies look nice, and the backgrounds look nice, and the, the trash swamps look really, you know, well- And, like, everything's well done! Like, I'll say the, the art is well done in that game, but, uh... Oh yeah, RNG evade. God damn it! I'm really not bringing the units that I should be bringing for this. Imagine if Protoku had a uh, a sure hit on his MP. That'd be nice. This is where we should just brought regular coup. Well, RNG, here we go. Honestly, I also think the like. Okay, first off, to be fair, I didn't make the game, and it's their time, their money, their you know, they get to make whatever they want. It's really up to them, right? It's their responsibility. Uh, but I do think the design of the main character hurt that game a lot. I think a lot of people are going to see that design and just be like, oh, that's a fan service game. The thing is, that game has no fan service in it whatsoever. It's actually a complete, like, mechanically driven game for the most part. I mean, it has a story and stuff, but, like, it's a very mechanically driven game. Very much so. And it's like, I feel like if they just had a more normal main character, even if it was slightly fan servicing, that game would have done a lot better. Like, I, I really think they hurt themselves in having such an over the top design. But it is a good game, like legitimately I thought the game was good, like the boss fights uh, were pretty good and it had some, you know, interesting gameplay mechanics and uh, and whatnot, but uh, I, I fucking hated the main character in that so much. Um, let's, probably not a servant, so I guess that's a good order. Hey, or is it Arzid? Hi, Arzid, I think I got that right. Name, send help. Two out of three would hit. How do you dodge Aya, by the way? Gotta love RNG, uh... Evade. Great. Oh, we got one! We got one! 
Can you imagine if it had evaded all three? Just run forehead and alright. Oh, those hit though. All three of those hit. This is BS right there. One more. Oh, there we go. Wow, we actually had really, we, we lit, had five work in a row. And you probably should have pierced some vulnerability, but uh, a lot of things should have all kinds of effects, but they don't represent them in gameplay, so. It's not like Guild needs a buff or anything. But yeah, it literally says in like, his character material, there's no blocking it, there's no like out physicaling it, right? You can't. Like, you know, Avalon works because Avalon is not trying to get into a, you know, a, it's not a physical wall versus, you know, Aya ripping up reality, right? It's, that's not what's happening. It's, you're not there. And that's, that's kind of the point. But yeah, there really is no brute strengthening your way out of that, that one. So it makes sense to, they could have just done though, like, uh, ignore defense too. That would work too. But I think the reason they didn't want to do, give it piercing vulnerability is because the, at the time they thought if they ever added Avalon, they probably would, would have just given it. That would have been so perfect, though, because now that they do Avalon, they represent it with the with the silver thing, right? So it could have worked out. They, that would have been so good. That would have been so good if Aya had Pierce Invulnerability, and then they finally add Avalon, and they give it the super invulnerability that Pierce Invulnerability doesn't work on. That would have been so good! Because then that kind of shows how it's like a better shield than the other shields, right, and shit, and it's like, oh my god, they, they messed it up, chat. And they just buff her. They buffed the hell out of her. Although, honestly, they buffed the hell out of her. That was... I'm, I'm not exaggerating. That is one of the largest buffs I've ever seen because it had over a three-turn impact. That's nuts, right? Because... How do, I don't even know how to describe this. Okay, so the fact that you're able to stack his guts means you're able to use his guts early and then use it again, uh, like, way more times than you would have otherwise. So you, you generally get one or two turns of extra survival like, basically, buffing his third skill means Hercules will live one, if not two, turns longer than he did before. So that's potentially one to two turns more of value. So I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. But then also, because he gets a million buster ups now, he is accomplishing more per turn. And over those turns, he's easily doing enough value to make a whole nother turn worth of damage, right? So he's getting roughly two to three turns more of value in the long run, right? And potentially more sometimes. So it's like, that is, that's really big, right? Like, that's a lot bigger than like Kuz. You know, Kuz is good, but it's, I'd say it's roughly about a turn of extra value over what he had. You know, he it, it doesn't live any longer, he just does more damage. So you'll potentially win maybe a turn sooner in a lot of situations. And in very specific circumstances, maybe you win two turns sooner, maybe. Like, Kuz basically gives him zero to two turns of value. And you might say, why zero? Because, and I've, I've already seen this, there are some fights where the extra attack up does not make you win a turn faster. Or because they have break bars, you could have broken that break bar anyway, and the attack buff is irrelevant, right? I've, I've already seen fights where Ku's buff did nothing. Like, literally, it did nothing. Uh, I've never seen a fight, though, where Herx is like that. So Ku literally got zero to two turns of value on his buff. Herc got, like, you know, one to four or five turns of value on his buff, which is just way more than what you typically see out of a buff. Like, buffs... Because, you know, you can break a lot of this stuff down and, and ultimately into numbers and, like, how much, you know, value it's worth. And, uh, it's pretty rare that they're that much. Yeah, he might be able to solo Abigail now. He already could take out a few of her lives on his own. He was, he was actually a good cleanup unit for that fight. 
Uh, he, he might be able to do it now. The one problem is she'll still remove his other buffs. So he, he didn't gain as... He, he gained a little bit in the Abigail fight, but he didn't gain as much, right? He, he objectively gets less out of his buff in that fight than almost in any other fight, right? Like, sure, you can have the, the Guts proc before her NP, and then that means her, her NP will hit the, the Bond CE, which it can't remove, right? And then you might be able to recast it and then use Evade to get the normal card damage and whatnot again. So, it, you know, he definitely got value out of it, no question. But, you know, you're, bust, you're going to lose your buster up. You're going to lose your thing that procs the buster up. You know, those kinds of things. So, it's still bad. Like, it's still a bad fight for him because he's still being counterclassed. You're still not going to get as much out of his buff as you could. Um, so, I'm not sure if he could do the whole thing. Because she has a lot of fucking health. Like, Jesus Christ. And, like, if, if he was at neutral, if Hercules was at neutral, I would say yes, he can absolutely do it. Like, definitely. Like, of course, that fight's really hard at neutral, but I think he could definitely do it at neutral. But with him being counterclassed, I think it might still be too much. And like, uh, Scaff can do it at neutral, but that's because her third skill actually works there, so it's not quite actually being at neutral. Uh, and then Kidu can do it because, uh, again, uh, not actually at neutral because of his niches. Uh, I haven't tested Ku there uh, since Ku's buff. Uh, I, I want to though, I need to do that. But I don't I don't have Abigail available to me on um on JP and he's not been buffed on NA, so I can't actually test it. But I have Abigail available to me on uh on NA. But yeah, because Ku uh because Ku I, I, Ku is kinda awkward for that fight, because the way you're supposed to beat that fight on most units that, if there aren't Hercules and things like that, is you don't beat it by lasting a long time. You beat it by killing her before she NPs a second time. And you survive the first NP with a gut CE or something like that. And then you use all your survivability skills on all the normal card damage turns, right? And Ku is capable of doing that. But the thing is, Ku is more about the long-term survival. He's got decent damage, no doubt, but he's more about the long-term survival Right, and so that fight is a damage race. It's kill her before she NPs two times. Like if you're doing with Scath or Enkidu or you know, you know, Sitting Master or something like that, you, the, the goal is kill her before she NPs the second time. Uh, and Ku is, you know, he's Ku is pretty good on the clock, but he's not that good on the clock, right? The only reason Scath can even do it is because she gets her, you know, anti divinity bonus, right? And she's a five star, five stars has really high stats and everything, right? So she's really good when you're on the clock, right? Uh, but Ku now has that, you know, 50% attack up when you're low in health and all that kind of shit. So he's way better on the clock than he was in, his, in stuff, and he's got an upgraded NP and, and that kind of thing. So, and command codes are stronger than ever now, and things like that. So it's certainly possible um, that Ku's going to be able to do it now, uh, but we'll just have to see. It'll be close. It'll be close. Yeah, and she stuns, right? Yeah, because she can even use the stun to delay the NP and stuff. Like, Scath is really good for soloing that, honestly. It's still tough for her, though. Like, she can't- Scath can't do that at, like, level 90 NP2. Right, and definitely not level 90 MP1. Like, she absolutely cannot do that. Uh, you know, you need to be like, you know, uh, you know, level 90, maybe MP5, or like level 100 MP3, you know, something like that. You know, you, she's got to be pretty, pretty tough to do it. However, she also did it before there was really good command codes, right? You know, if, if you tried to do it with Scath now, and she was, you know, level 90 MP2, she probably could do it now, because you have command codes uh, that will help a lot. So yeah, probably can do it now. I'm not sure she could, if she could do it at, um, oh, and she's been buffed too. Although uh, that buff is not that impactful, but uh, she might be able to do it at level 90 NP1 now. If you got lucky, and I mean really lucky, uh, and use command codes and you got her buff and everything, maybe. Uh, I, I'd love to try that, but uh, you know, we don't have story replay. Seriously, I'd do it right now, right? Like, just have a, a, a Abigail stream. Let's go use, let's try, you know, Scath now, and then try Ku now, and, and, and Herc and all this, but you know, there's no story replay, so. Because Abigail's a hard fight. She's one of those main story fights that's on par with a lot of challenge quests. Although she's kind of easy to trivialize because, you know, we do have ways to counterclass her and whatnot. Like, if you have Melt or Passion Lift, she's pretty easy. But yeah, you can also debuff her, you can, you know, go the taunt route, because the taunt route works really well for budget people. If you don't have something like Melt on your team, and you need to be able to live longer uh, to get your damage off, uh, taunts are the way to go, because she'll NP you and remove your taunt, but she's going to NP you anyway, because she's already targeted you, right? Uh, and then, you know, her NP's not AoE, so the rest of your team is safe. To make an account for every main story fight, I know, right?
Dude, I want story replay so bad. There's just so many, like, the video potential and just, because I love boss fights. I'm not, like, I, I have so much fun when I get to do boss fights in this game. At least when they're good boss fights, anyway. Yeah, all the the uh, alter egos can solo it pretty easy because hell, they can even face tank uh, like her stuff and, and whatnot. So and they kill her so fast, but most units are not able to kill her that fast. So they have to, you know, in, in order to kill her before she NPs a second time, they have to be able to throw out just so much damage, right? The damage that Scath has to throw out in that fight, if she was counterclassing like an alter ego, that boss would die so goddamn quickly, right? It would just be disgusting. Like, can you imagine if Scath? was a fucking alter ego, and, you, and you, you, you did that fight with her? Like, that'd be so ridiculous. Okay, we're getting close. We're, get, we're, getting, we're getting close to the, the stuff that matters here. Yeah, I think you just have to kill four of those raids. You don't have to kill all of them. It's kind of weird. I have seen, though, the support for story replay definitely start to climb. I think people are starting to be like, yeah, I... You know, I've, I've already farmed all the stuff for the units that I really care about. I actually would like to have something to use them on. And also, it's, I think it's a combination of the word kind of spreads, people kind of spread the concept, uh, which is insane because, you know, it's such a basic concept. But anyway, uh, and then also people have more stories that they're like, oh, that was awesome. Like, Lost Belt 5 is, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, wow, that was something. I would like to redo that, right? Like, so the, the more they make, like, good stories, the more people actually want to be able to replay them, so... It really is so ludicrous, though, that uh, we don't have story replay. By the way, I like how this is like a big dramatic fight, but it's this is such bad gameplay. Like, it's not even like it's not even like Kochiro versus Musashi, where you at least have to like get good value and play you know halfway correctly. You literally can beat this on turn one. Like, I, I, which is what happened, by the way, on my main account, is I beat this on turn one. It's random if you'll beat it on turn one or, or not, but uh, you absolutely can. Oh look, we, we beat it in, 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 in one turn. Okay, well. Yeah, really dramatic. Great fight, 10 out of 10. Uh, really, uh, really on par with the best 1v1s in time, you know. F go, man. I mean, she's a saber, so, you know, memes. Oh yeah, she gets a costume there, I forgot about that. I'm not sure anyone will use it or not, but, uh... There's someone will. I don't feel like that's gonna be a super popular costume, though. Wait, what do I have to do now? Maybe, maybe you have to build everything? God, I don't wanna have to build everything. That, that might be what it is, I might have to build everything. Either that or kill the other raids or beat a certain mission. None of my other accounts had to stop there, so but my other accounts had actually played the event, so. Yeah, we'll do the raids and then see. The only thing I really want to do on this account, other than get the Grail, is then, um, you know, get a CE drop, for God's sakes, but then, uh, get the command code. Get the command code's good. I didn't build everything, I got the Grail. Feels good. I'm surprised Masashi didn't get the eye patch thing. That's actually really weird that they didn't do that. If, if honestly, if they had done that story today, they probably would have done it. And now, and now because DW is you know horrible at doing anything retroactively, they're gonna wait until like it's like a relevant thing again. And if it's never a relevant thing again, they just won't do it. Cause that's how they are. You know, they finally added UHZ as a costume, but they waited until it, you know it was like story relevant. You know, cause you know fuck doing retroactive things. I hate that about DW, how they just do not do things retroactively. Like, uh, like they'll realize something is bad, and they'll start retroactively fixing it for new characters, but they won't go back and fix it for the old ones. Like, it's just, it's insanity. Why? I should've bought Atlas. I could've removed the, uh, buff block. But I forgot it did that, so... 
Achilles can still NP, but I guess they're better off uh, taking their NP set harder. Wait, no. That's, all, that's, a, that's absolutely not the case, because the enemy's a caster. I thought everyone was a neutral, but, uh, yeah, no. That would have been way better to use Achilles. I am so disappointed that no one in chat answered what UHC is, which leads me to believe no one knows what UHC is, which makes me very sad. Like, surely there's someone in chat. There we go. Red got it. Good god, that was making me sad, man. We know we just don't care. <laughs> like, legitimately, I think she's more known as White MHX opposed to what she actually is, which is UHC. That voice line was amazing, right there. I mean, she's not really irrelevant, like... She was just as relevant in her event as pretty much anyone else's in theirs. And see, if I had MHX, I would use that costume. But I don't have MHX, and I've never even attempted to get MHX. As such, I probably will never have her, unless I just randomly get ganked by her in the, like, GSSR or something. Which, with my luck, might actually happen, but you know. I really do hope the ad Lion King costume when they do the movies. But I don't really expect it. Because we don't ever get nice things when it comes to like tie-ins. Like when was the last guys? When was the last time a game came out or an anime came out and Afco actually did a significant tie-in that wasn't like eight months later? Like seriously, when Apoc launched, they gave you a CE that gave you like 50 master XP. That was the whole thing they did for when Apoc came out, right? They didn't, and, you know, Babylon. They didn't. They did a little bit more, but they just gave you a, a Mystic Code. That was that really wasn't much. Like it really wasn't, right? They. They don't do- and when Arcade launched, they gave you a Mysticode again, right? Like, they don't do jack shit. When they, and then when Excel Link came out, they just gave you a, uh, a CE, right? They, they don't do jack. Remember when they updated Ushi's animations with the Babylon came out? I know, right? That must have been a different timeline. Imagine- is Ushi even in Arcade? I don't think she is. But imagine if- she got into arcade and like, you know, had like way better animations there and like, you know, proper body proportions and whatnot. They did get a, uh, you know, they got the better Bodica though. She actually has your chariot. Yeah, a lot of day one stuff actually isn't in arcade. You can only do so many servants and... They focus on adding new things that are going to be more popular than adding like the old things for the most part. Every once in a while they add like a day one thing, but not very often. Yep, they got Jack with pants before we did. They're, it's just how it's gonna be though, because, you know, they give more of a shit, and it is easier for 3D games to do costumes, so... As time goes on, the disparity is just gonna get bigger and bigger. Actually, it's- more, even though the regular FGO has been out way longer than Arcade, I actually suspect that Arcade probably already has more costumes than FGO. I mean, or FGO just- I mean, dear god, they barely had any costumes in this game. Wow, uh, statue did not care for Gwen there. Huh. 
Well, she's got pants, just short pants, but then big socks too, so between the two it's like good enough. Certainly better than what we have. The funny thing is people don't realize this because people only see the anime. The Gil actually wore many different things throughout Face Tonight. Like in the Fate Route he wore one thing and the Blade Works wore something else. Like in the in Fate Route he had like a like a fancy coat or some shit. And he actually wore his armor a lot in the Fate Route too. But uh, he doesn't really have like one definitive look for the for uh, Fate Stay Night. But everybody thinks only the Blade Works because of the anime. It's funny though, he literally never wears that. Uh, he literally never wears that in uh, the Fate Route, like not, not at all. I don't think he wears it in, in Fate Hollow either, because yeah, he looks really weird in Fate Hollow, but we don't talk about that. I mean, his fashion is fine in a lot of things, it's just not fine in certain things. Like, honestly, his fashion's pretty good in, like, Fate Strange Fake. His casual wear there is, like, a white suit. That, that's actually probably his best. Like, that, that, that worked pretty well. Um, uh, and then it's, yeah, it's okay in, in the regular Fate route. It's not, like, the best thing ever, but it's, it's, it's okay. It's kind of what you would expect. Honestly, what he wears in the Fate route is what you really would, you would expect of Gilgamesh. Honestly. And then in Unlimited the Blade works. I don't know what the hell is going on there. Like, it doesn't, like, look bad, but it doesn't really fit Gil in the slightest, so I have no idea why he, he wore that, to be honest. And then Fate Hollow, I, uh, I don't even know what to say about that. That's definitely a disaster. But yeah, I definitely think his best casual wear is definitely Fate Strange Fake. I think that fits him the best by far. And it also just, you know, looks good, so... Unfortunately, Fate Strange Fake is, like, uh, you know... Not gonna be finished anytime soon. I actually imagine most people don't know what his casual wear is in Fate Strange Fake. And that's more reasonable than normal because, you know, obviously most people don't read books, but even if you, you know, you, you don't see what he's, you know, they describe it, but you don't, you never see what he's wearing from the book anyway, right? And if you're gonna get like a summary or something, you're not gonna get any of that, so. Kinda reasonable, nobody's ever seen that. <laughs> I think they show it in the, uh, in the trailer, though, or the, you know, thing that they made for Face Change Fake, I think. Yeah, the writer was sick for a long time. He was he did put in the out for quite a while. He's been much, you know, ever since he recovered, or I, I hope he recovered. I know he's, you know, he's not in the hospital anymore and he's writing again, so I, I hope he's in good health again, but, um, you know, he may still have health problems, I don't know. But anyway, ever since he got back to writing, he's been, you know, pumping him out at a much, you know, at a rate you would expect, right? He's, he obviously, he's not, you know, he's taking his time, and it's not like he's pumping one out every month, but, um, you know, they're, they're coming out steady again. Honestly, if he, if he didn't get sick, I think they'd be done now. Like, he, he would've been finished by now, but because he got sick, they're really, really behind, so... Yeah, it is a shame that they never published this stuff in NA, because I think people would buy it. I think a lot of people would buy it. And it's weird, there's other, like, light novels and books and shit that come out from Japan that do get properly localized. You know, obviously, thankfully, the fake community is so popular that there's always a lot of fans. Like, they get translated by the fans always, where a lot- I, I feel bad, there's all kinds of IPs out there that people are really, like, they really like and stuff, and they get books and things, but they- the, the fan base isn't large enough that they don't get any fan translations, and so they just they get nothing. They just can't get it, right? Uh, but there are some really random things, though, that do get translated uh, into English because it doesn't it doesn't cost that much to hire a transla a good translator. Like you know, it costs some money, sure, but like generally, it's not too hard to pay off the money you put into localizing something. It's not nearly as hard as making something originally. Um, like, I've seen some pretty damn small projects from Japan in, like, small books and stuff get translated. So, it's honestly beyond me that Fate has never translated their stuff. But, the early days of Time Moon tells me they don't really like NA. 
So I don't think they've ever put much priority on it. The only reason NA is starting to get stuff from Titan Moon is because Titan Moon has gotten so big, it's kind of gone beyond Titan Moon. Right? It's like, they're almost too big to be able to, you know, not have things get localized and whatnot. Because even if, like, time, the, you know, the staff at Titan Moon themselves, you know, doesn't even think about it or doesn't care to do it, uh, you know, they're connected to so many other big companies now that it's just kind of going to happen. But, uh, you know, the books are still different, though, because, you know, they're really... Like they, they still own the rights to that kind of stuff directly. I forgot this thing has guts. God damn it. But yeah, I think, I think if they... I will say, I don't think they're ever going to translate the character material books. And that actually probably would be a mistake because those would be so hard to translate. Because you, you'd have to get a... You would have to get... A uh, uh, someone that could translate it and also was incredibly familiar with fate and then could also communicate with Nasu. Like I'm serious, you you could not do it properly otherwise, because you know the Japanese language is already hard to translate into English anyway, and because the character material books are nothing but technical stuff about like how the fate universe works and everything, it would be unbelievably easy to translate something in a way that's implying something incorrectly. Like it, it wouldn't even be a matter of being a bad translation; it would just be so easy to accidentally. Like, imply something is going to do something it doesn't do, or something stronger than it is, and... Like, it's just, it, it'd be such a problem. It's not a, I don't, I don't, I don't mean, like, names and shit. Like, not, not at all. I mean, like, all the technical stuff, how strong things are, and things like that. That would be so difficult to translate. And then, like, to make sure you're doing it properly, you would literally have to have the translator speak English and Japanese, of course. And then, uh, know the Fate Universe, so they know what questions to ask. And, like, know when something's kind of, like, wait, is this right? And then they need to be able to talk to Natsu and have Natsu actually, you know, correct and be like, okay, no, it needs to be like this, and this is supposed to imply this kind of thing, right? Um, but that's just... They're not gonna do that. Like, I don't think Natsu gives enough of a fuck to do that. And that's a lot more effort. And so if they did if they did translate the character material books, I don't think it would be done that well. So, uh... That's pr probably never gonna happen. But maybe someday we get some of the other books, but... I know, I guess they feel like because they're not new and popular and the spotlight's not on them, if you translate them now, they wouldn't sell as well. But also, I legitimately don't think Titan Moon cares about NA. Like, their, their whole, the whole history of that company, uh, they don't seem to care about NA very much. I think Anaplex and, and Sony, and they care because money, but, uh... Yeah, Titan Moon just has not uh, stricken me as a company that's uh, big on the West. The music knows. And it's taking longer to get through this event than I would like, but uh, we're getting there. To be fair though, this account had not done anything in this event until really like last night, so. God, then I have to start spamming crap to get CE drops. Oh yeah, this stage. Every wave has more than three enemies, so you can't three turn it. They did that on purpose. Those bastards. There's probably a part two to this event. Which will probably start on the 18th, I think. Although I wouldn't expect part two to be that big either. But yeah, there probably is a part two to this event. Now I'm pretty sure there's a part two. The wiki even has it listed as like the next stage is named part two and whatnot. We'll see though. It's certainly not confirmed, but it's not confirmed either way. Like, I don't think it's going to be a part two like you would see from, like, the summer event. Because the part one, obviously, is not even as big as that part one, right? So it's definitely going to be nothing like that. But I think they'll do, there'll be a little, you know, extra something, and then probably the challenge quest and, and that kind of thing. But we'll see. Like, who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us. I doubt it, though. The main reason I, I doubt it is because they have been so lazy lately that I just don't see them putting in that kind of effort. Like, th this feels like an unbelievably phoned-in event that is, like, so light on the assets and on work and, and stuff on their end that li uh, so I think the whole thing's gonna be like that, right? You know, for God's sakes, they couldn't even be bothered to draw the statue no boost, even though that would've been such an easy, simplistic thing to do.
Imagine being in this like this little house and you use coins in pee. Like this house would not survive. The thing is they don't have a standard because they never brought anything to NA. Like, they, they literally never brought anything to NA. They, they, they didn't bring anything to have a standard or how well it did because, you know, they, they just never bothered because I don't think they ever cared in the first place. Like, the only things that ever came to NA were things that had nothing to do with Titan Moon, right? Because, like, the Dean Stay Night, that wasn't made by, you know, Titan Moon wasn't that involved in it. They were involved, they were involved with the original creation of the Japanese version, but not, but it's still ultimately, you know, run by that, you know, Dean and everyone, right? And, like, that studio. And it's so standard for anime to, to come, you know, to the West anyway. Like, I don't, I, I doubt Time Moon did anything to do with, you know, with that chain of events. And what's so nuts is how long it took them to bring FGO to NA. That shows h how hard it was, right? By the time they, they started bringing FGO to NA, you know, FGO had blown up to this. It was so big, right? You, no publisher on the planet will allow you not to bring it to NA when it was that size, right? But it was obvious that it required it to get to that size for it to happen. You know, Type Moon was not going to bring F Go to NA. They were not going to do it, right? It literally, it obviously happened because it got so ungodly huge and was making so much money. Like, there's no way you're going to stop Anaplex from doing that, right? Like, it, it just, it's just insane that it required F Go to get that big. You know, meanwhile, almost every other Gacha game comes over here anyway, and they don't, they don't get a half as big, right? Like, it's just. They are so against NA, like it's really obvious. Like it's only because it's just grown, it's grown so out of their hands, right? That, uh, and we still barely get it, right? So, it's, it's kind of silly. Okay, I think you fight the ghost twice now. And then you fight the saber guy, and then we can start messing around. And then I have to start farming for a goddamn CE, but you know, what are you gonna do? The thing is, the global version of FGO was still worth it, though. Like, because it cost them almost, it cost them so little. You know, localizing a game is so much cheaper than creating a game. It's not even comparable. Like, they have, they have absolutely profited off the NA version of this game. It's just they've made so much more profit off of, you know, China and, and Japan. Like, those two are definitely their biggest markets. But they have absolutely made uh, a lot of money off of, off of global, but... Uh, well, yeah, I guess it's technically not global. It's in a, you know, it's not America. It is in a, you know, it's, it's you know, in Canada and everything. But it's so easy to, it, it, it is global though. I don't know why people act like it's not. It's so easy to get to play it in Europe and whatnot. It takes no effort. Uh, it's not like it's region locked or anything, right? You, you literally just have to download it from a different uh, store. Like that's nothing. The biggest, the biggest aspect of it not technically being EU is just the fact that it's not marketed in EU in any way, right? And a lot of people don't care enough. If it's not like right in front of their face, right? A lot of people aren't going to bother to even look into it, right? But it's not hard to play FGO in a, in an EU at all. Like, it's no effort. Yeah, because like, legitimately, it would be stupid of them to to make an EU version of the game. It'd be like four years behind, you know, it's so easy for NA players to play the NA version, like who cares? Now what they should do is try to get the NA version on 
like the typical app store for EU because um, you know, that would make it you know easier to find and that kind of thing. But they probably don't want to bother with like the laws and everything. So, but you know they they don't region lock the game from. Uh, I wonder if I can break this without MPing. Dwayne might be able to because he's got a brave chain. Eh, it's fine now. We'll be alright. I think you only have to break two health bars here anyway. And if you can't play it on your phone, that has nothing to do with its version, that has to do with your phone. Unless like your phone is region locked, like the game is not region locked. I mean, you can you loads of people play it in Europe, and it's not an issue. Like you just have to download it off, but not the app store. Yeah, and I guess you can you can get it off the official app store, but you'd have to you know message your region and that kind of thing. I guess that's weird. I know um, Q app is trying to get Fco back, but it's pretty obvious that it was the Waltz thing now. Like so many people were trying to act like it's not the Waltz thing, but it clearly was. I'm sure they didn't cite like when it, whatever. You know, cease and desist, or whatever the fuck they sent them, like whatever whatever Anaplex sent uh, QApp, I'm sure it did not say, fuck you guys, you, you put up the Waltz game past the download limit. I'm sure it didn't say that, right? Because they, they had to cite, you know, some bullshits in their terms and in, in, in conditions or whatever that, that, you know, didn't even cover the Waltz game, right? So, I, I'm sure they cited just some technicality. It's kind of like how sometimes police will arrest, like, a gangster because they ran a red light, right, you know? But they'll, they're, they're trying to get them for the other stuff, but they'll, they'll get them on some, you know, bullshit technicality that's super minor, right? I, I, overwhelmingly, that's what I think happened, is, like, what the technical reason why they took them down was some, you know, crazy minor, you know, BS in their terms and conditions that, you know, is not actually the reason that they took it down. I think the reason they took it down was because they had the walls game up beyond the download limit, and they were just mad about that. And they might have been mad about something else too, right? There might have been something else behind the scenes that had happened a long time ago, or recently, or whatever that they were also mad about, and so they were happy to do it. But it's kind of obvious, because the reason they cited it obviously would have applied to a lot of other things, but they didn't shut those people down, so it's pretty clear that that's not, that wasn't the reason, so. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, you don't, you can change your region and write and download it that way, but you can play it without doing that. You can literally go to like APK Pure and just download it from them. You used to be able to just go to Q app and download it from them, but you know, as we were just talking about, you can't do that anymore. Um, you know, APK Pure is not anyone's favorite site by any means. It's not, I don't like it half as much as Q app. Um, you know, they're more shady. But like anyone can, from any region, you can go to APK Pure and download Epco of any any region you want, and then there you go, and that's that. But um, oh, if you're an iPhone, it's definitely harder. Yeah, an iPhone, you have to you have to jump through hoops. But that, again, that's not Epco. That's that's Apple shenanigans. So yeah, if you get through Apple, you have to you have to change your region and make an account. Once you've done all that, you can switch it back, and it's fine. But. That Waltz game is so stupid. The, the whole download limit was artificial urgency. That's li they literally were trying to do what the diamond industry does uh, for a virtual product. Which, the diamond industry is no standard to begin with. So, first of all, diamonds are unbelievably common in the world, right? Like, diamonds are, they're not a rare thing. They're not rare or valuable at all. Like, they're not, not even slightly. Um, but the diamond industry has, like, a monopoly on it, and the you know, stranglehold uh, the supply of them, and they intentionally only, you know, trickle in. They, ar they artificially make diamonds rare on the market because they have they have control over the supply, so they don't put enough supply to give to retailers and whatnot. So they make them artificially rare, right? Uh, it's a it's very similar to digital products. There's no cap on a digital product, right? You can have a, a no no limit. The only limit you have is how many people can download it in the same hour, right? Like, it's because of bandwidth issues and stuff. You know, if you have too many people trying to download something at the exact same time, it can be a problem. But, 
In the grand scheme of things, that's not an issue, right? But a lot of companies like to try to artificially make urgency and rarity because that yeah, gets people all wet in their jimmies, right? And that's literally why they did it. For There's literally no reason to put a download limit on Echo Waltz outside of artificial urgency. That's the only reason, because there is no... There is no issue with the supply of a digital game, right? It's like the stupidest thing ever, and they just did that to try to you know, build a lot of hype around it and get a lot of people to try it, or otherwise they might not have bothered. But because it was limited, it got a lot of people to try it. They're trying to get their hooks in, right? But in such an artificial and stupid way, and it just, it's not a good enough game, I don't think, to last, so it's pretty stupid of them, in my opinion. Dude, I don't know why people don't just get fake diamonds. There's no reason to buy a legitimate diamond. People have this idea that a legitimate diamond is like means something, right? It means nothing. A legitimate diamond is garbage. They are ungodly common, and you can make a fake diamond that looks better. So who cares, right? Like literally, who cares? They are not rare. They are not valuable. They just cost a lot because the, the diamond industry artificially limits the supply of them, right? So in terms of, you know, value, rarity, and that kind of thing, they're worthless. And in terms of aesthetics, you might think a diamond looks nice, sure. Or a sapphire looks nice, or, or what have you. But you can artificially make that, and you can actually have a way broader spectrum of colors and combinations and shapes and stuff much easier. Like, artificial, you know, fake diamonds are way better than regular diamonds. I would, if I, I, I would much rather have something made out of fake diamond than real diamond, like no question, because it's cheaper, more practical, more reasonable, I'm not feeding into a bullshit industry, and it'll look nicer. Now sure, a, a poor fake diamond might not be nice, right? Like a, a really cheap fake diamond might break easily, might not look that nice, all kinds, you know, like a, a poorly made fake diamond, sure, you could argue this is, you know, isn't worth it, but a well-made fake diamond is cheaper and much nicer than a, uh... Dude, it's funny too, is that whole like diamond thing for, for Valentine's and, and, and anniversary stuff and all that, that that was that was orchestrated by diamond companies. I'm serious. Like we, the history of this is well documented. Like where all those ads came from, and this whole idea of like inflating love with like rings that have diamonds on them and shit. That all can't, that did not come from like some ancient tradition, you know, from you know ancient man or anything like that. You know, it literally came from companies that sold diamonds, and people are so stupid they fell for it. Right? Like what? It, it's just shocking to me. Like, sure, I don't think there's anything wrong with liking rings and, and, you know, pretty, you know, pretty gems and shit. Like, that's fine, right? But this whole idea that, like, a diamond means more than, like, a fake one, and it's just ridiculous, right? It's, it's literally just people, and it worked, too. If you, if you follow, like, the profits of these, these companies after they kind of made that big marketing push, their profits skyrocketed, right? Because people really do conflate now, like, oh, yeah, of course, for an anniversary or for a proposal, you have to get a proper diamond. It, which is, it's just so stupid. And it's also so funny because like so many people will get like a, a, a ring for uh, like a proposal or whatever and they wouldn't even know if it was real diamond or not. They have to go to, to someone to check if it's real or not. To make sure like their man is worthy, right? Like, it's, you know how stupid that is? Like, it's like you don't even know the difference. Like, it's just insanity. But that's how people are, man. Very susceptible to marketing. Pretty sure this thing does something nasty when you break its health bar, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with liking shiny things, it's just you can have nice shiny things that don't actually cost a lot, so... And uh, being someone that really likes the color green, I can confirm that, like, fake diamonds and things like that for the color green are way better. Like, the kind of, the kind of gems and stuff you can get that are green, there's some nice ones, you know, but they pale in comparison to the kind of green, green shades you can get out of, uh, out of most, like, real, you know, rare gems and whatnot, which aren't actually rare, but, you know. Because they're, like, emeralds and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, they're okay, but they're not half as good as, like, a lot of fake stuff you can make. Like, they, you get way better shades of green. Like, em emeralds are, uh, 
They're they're they're, they're child's play. Like they're that that's 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 meh green. That's not that, that ain't the good shit. See, gold is actually rare. That's the thing, it's actually rare. And the actual amount of gold on the planet is actually a lot smaller than people realize. It's actually kind of sad. Especially because it gets wasted a lot. And gold actually does have some practical use. It doesn't have a lot. But it's not it's not a particularly great metal, to be honest, but Due to how like moldable it is and stuff, there are, there are some uses for, for gold, uh, but it's gold is certainly not like the most practical metal on the planet. But it it it's not irrelevant either, right? There's some metals basically have no use in, in any practical sphere whatsoever, where gold absolutely does. Uh, America went off the gold standard a long time ago. It was actually. Uh, Widely to believe to be a huge mistake, but uh, you know. That's a whole other issue. Like the issues uh, America has with, uh, with money, but you know. A little bit of dot damage there. Well, that guy puts you on the clock. Oh yeah, diamonds are a hell of a lot more common than gold. Like, diamonds are just not rare. Like, they're, they're, it's not a rare thing. The amount of diamonds on planet Earth is so large, it's like, it's insanity. Like, they're not, there's nothing rare about a diamond. I think we're at the boss fight now, uh, so we can check out his animations and all that again. Uh, I'm gonna be RB real quick, I need to grab something to eat. Grab a snack. I'm back. Also, I, I do indeed have a hot dog bun. I, that is indeed what I have. Oh, fuck. This account can't do... Damn it. This account can't do what my main account does. I can't... I can't... Yeet a, you, the, 
The whole being able to yeet story supports and it allow you to solo like normal, that is a premium thing, right? You need a... Uh, you need a MLBK scope. I don't got it. And what's so frustrating is Chin Gong has a battery skill. So with regular K scope, you get to 90%. You obviously can't summon Chin if you're dealing with a sto four story support. Like, you have to have MLBK scope yourself, there's no other way. The good news is, I know this for a fact because I sold this many times trying to get Ku to beat it. And all the times I did this with Ku, the boss only killed Chin Gong on turn one, one time. Because Chin Gong gets the bonus health, he almost never dies. And obviously, this is worse because my second hand is not very likely to have. Um, you know, a Brave Chain in it, when you're down to two units, you're way more likely. So this is objectively worse than my main account, but... Okay, I have to change my command codes. This, this will be hard enough that I can't do that. Oh, so we want to actually look at the animations and stuff, so... What I need is uh, anti-debuff. Debuffs like the whole thing in this fight. Hmm. Yeah, because his extra attack is uh, apparently only one hit. That makes me really worried that he's not playable. But his extra attack could actually be one of his buster attacks or something like that. But it looks too fancy for that, so I'm, I'm kind of worried. We'll see, though. That was Lancelot's theme from Fate Zero. But not the Fate Zero anime. What in a... Fate Zero actually had a soundtrack before the anime, but it was for, you know, the book. Basically, they, they did like a... Kind of like a drama CD thing, and they made music for it, right? So it had a soundtrack long before the anime, actually. Yeah, there, the... Yeah, there's... Y y you can just switch command codes for free now. All the removers do now is the can relock a key, right? You know you have to unlock the command code. Now the respec item lets you like real lock it and get the key back, which is stupid, but that's what it does now. I actually like the Fate Zero soundtrack, uh, like the the book soundtrack, if you will, more than the animes. There's some songs from the anime that I like, of course, but I think the book soundtrack was really good, and it was way more in line with the kind of the tone they had set with Fate up to that point. Like from the actual visual novel, and then from Dean's Day Night and everything, like it, it fits in really well with that stuff. They gave me over a hundred removers back. Yeah, no, they should let you turn them into QP or mana prisms or something like, or every, every you know, 30 turn into a rare prism. I don't care, like something. <laughs> oh my god, that's level 65 Chin Gong. Why the fuck was he on the team? That doesn't even make sense. I can't imagine why I had a team that had him on it. Because that was a preset team. I, I don't, I'm confused as to why that was even there. I mean, there's nothing efficient about using a 65 Chin Gong in a solo setup. Because it's not like it had a back row. There was no back row. Oh, was it George before? Okay, that makes more sense. I'll probably play Impact some. I didn't realize it was actually this late. Jesus Christ. I want to at least do this, though. Oh, my God. 
I fucking hate. I, I, I knew this account got Kiara. I didn't realize it got two. That is so stupid. That is so fucking stupid. Between my two accounts, and I, I didn't even roll that much. I, it was just a lot of tickets. I got Kiara four times between my two accounts, and I could not get a goddamn Brunhilder. That is so stupid. God. And it's not like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, sometimes you get a five star that you don't like as much as the four star, but it's like, at least you don't mind. Like, like when Fury was going for a uh, Fujino, right? Like a lot of people really like Fujino and they wanted Fujino a lot more than Voichiki. But like, yeah, I don't hate Voichiki, right? So it's like a consolation prize. Summer Kiara is not a consolation prize. Not at all. Please tell me people are not arguing that diamonds are actually ra rare and valuable. I, I I would be that's so shocking because it is such a known and documented thing that diamonds are ungodly common, and it's just the diamond industry artificially creating scarcity, and that the diamond just the diamond industry is one of the most sketchy industries on the planet, and they're rather famous for this, and they're like they're they're awful. That's another reason not to get someone a diamond uh, for a proposal because you really should not be supporting that fucked up industry. Like who the fuck wants to, like. They're awful. Like, under the phrase blood diamonds exist for a reason. That's a really famous saying. That, that, the, the movie didn't make that, by the way. That saying has existed way before the movie. The movie just named themselves after it. You know, that, that, that's a really known saying for a reason. Blood for the blood god? Yeah, there's that too. Oh yeah, we don't have our battery skill, so. But we'll probably get our MP anyway. I'm so annoyed though that I can't eat. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna use her attack buff to make up for how behind we are with all the bullshit. That doesn't even make up for all the bullshit, but, uh... It's skull, but you're close. But yeah, he didn't kill Chin Gong, and that's almost how it is every time. I don't know why I didn't catch this last turn. Oh my god, I messed up. He... He, he NP sealed Chin Gong. See, this is why K-Scope is, like, so important. You can just do the thing, and you're done. And now we're sitting here like, well... Like, he'll never kill... He'll never kill Himiko, and he'll probably kill Chin Gong this turn, so... Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. I- it is so important. The debuff removal is so fucking important in this fight, because there's so many debuffs in this fight. I'm having to waste it on Shinko. That's so fucking stupid. You know what? I'm gonna have Himiko punch him in the face once. I don't, I don't even feel bad about this. So this guy doesn't have voice lines, which I actually didn't realize that, because when I record, I can't- I don't hear my sound, so I actually didn't, uh, I didn't know he didn't have voice lines. That's another reason why I'm kind of, uh, thinking now he's not playable. But they've done this before, where they try to make it look like something's not playable, and they intentionally limit their animations and those kinds of things. Um, so that, that they, it could all be a fake out. In Canis's case, though, I think it's because her animations literally weren't finished yet. But uh, it's hard to say. They may have just been fake doing a fake out on that one. I don't know. I'll do slow mo when he's gonna NP. Oh my god, we're getting so decimated because I had to waste the debuff clear. Thankfully, you know we're not a lancer. Like this was actually really hard to do with Ku, but Ku also had MLB uh, K scope for a uh, Chen Gong. I made it smoother, but. Uh, you know, being a Lancer made this uh, incredibly difficult. Okay, he'll actually NP it when we break his health bar. Look quick charge. I'll put it in slow mo. I should have done that after casting my skills. Thankfully, I can remove the stun with my uh, command code. Oh. 
容赦なくお前たちを引きずるもう遅いトモイヤスドラゴンイディオセリア遅い Does he have voice lines when you fight him the second time? Like, cause that, that's so weird he doesn't have voice lines. Like, a lot of unplayable things have voice lines. I mean, yeah, I could see that as a Buster animation. That cannot be any, uh, an extra attack animation, though. That that is that is one hit count. That is absolutely one hit count. Um, that could be a Buster animation, but they don't. They normally don't use a Buster animation for that kind of thing. They've done weird shit like that before, though. Like Canis's crit animation was a different animation instead of a different card type, right? Like she was pretty weird too. So it's possible, but that that is that doesn't make me skeptical. Uh, they might do another Achilles at some point, maybe. He's popular enough. They don't do alternate male characters super often, but it could happen. Yeah, I kind of feel like he's gonna be like the, uh, the last guy and it's not gonna be playable. Like, it, he looks more, I will say this, he looks more playable than that guy did, right? Like, that MP animation is a lot more fancy and that kind of thing. It looks like a proper animation, but... It definitely is not an extra attack. There's no way that it's either the ending of an extra attack or that's like his buster card. That's like his long range buster card. And it, it could be. Like, and they might do this on purpose. I could totally see them intentionally trying to make it look like he's not going to be playable, right? Because one, they probably make more money that way. Because then it's like, oh, he's not playable. I'm not going to save my SQ. I'll roll the Gasha now then. And then, oh, God, he is playable. Got to bust up the credit card. You know, that kind of thing. So maybe he's playable, but I, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't really think so. I mean, I, would, I absolutely would not put it past them and to try to, you know, to fool people, right? And try to, you know, juke. Uh, that attack down, I'm pretty sure, is 50%. I'm not, so I don't know if it's worth the DMP right now. I'd have to use my command code twice, though, to get rid of the attack down, so probably not worth it. This is so much easier at neutral, by the way. I mean, Achilles is AoE and Koo is single target and all these things, but God, it was so hard on Koo. That's because he's a fucking Lancer. Oh, we haven't won yet. Yeah, that's a big fucking attack down. Holy crap. But yeah, I would, if I was going to guess, if I had to place my, my, my bets, I would say he's not playable. And if he doesn't end up being playable, I would just say, uh, well played, DW. You, uh, you done, you, 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 you pulled this shit move and you found a way to do a really good job of convincing everyone he wasn't playable when he was. Also, I can't remove the attack down now because it gave him more debuffs. Thankfully, it's like blood axes. Well, I don't think there's much point in saving this fight because I don't actually- I wanted to do it with Curse Arm, but I don't actually have access to a Grail Curse Arm right now, so. No biggie. I recorded it with Pent, so that was kind of fun. I didn't record- well, actually, I did record it with Ku, but I'm not gonna make that a video because it, you need a lot of RNG to do this little answer. I actually like two turn buffs. They, they allow them to, to kind of have a bit more fun with the ratio on numbers and stuff. I wish they did it a bit more often. I, I don't think it necessarily needs to be super common, but... Yeah, all of my pens are 10 10 10. He's pretty easy to 10 10 10. Doesn't take much effort at all, really. So this uh, one has a unique song, I'm pretty sure. Let me turn my music back on. I want to know if he has voice lines here, though.
I actually have no idea why Jason is the one that's in my room, but uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, they've got Calamity Jane's two turns, Blood Axe's two turns, Candace's two turns. Like, you know, there's a lot of effects that you can make really strong, so they're, they're, they're too strong to be applied for three turns, right? But they're not necessarily as strong as it's applied for one turn. Or you want, it, you want it to be the special thing on the servants. Like, yeah, this is as strong as something that would only last one turn. But, but my, the benefit of this character is it lasts for two turns, right? Like, that's pretty cool. Like, I, I'm fine with that. So I, I like two-turn effects. You just have to be smart about them. You don't want to make a skill that should just straight up be a three-turn effect, right? And it's a two-turn effect instead. It needs to be stronger than a three-turn effect, obviously. Well, I can tell you right now, unless this changes a lot, this does absolutely does not sound like Blaze Blue music because Blaze Blue shtick is combining whatever genre that fits the character or the theme and then combining it with rock. They use like that that is what Blaze Blue does, and they've they've even said that, and it's obvious. Like, I listen to Blaze music constantly, and their thing is like combining, like, Rahakam and traditional Japanese instruments with guitar. They basically throw guitar on everything. That's what Blaze Blue does, is they throw guitar on everything, like electric guitar. Like, you, you would never have a Blaze Blue remix of something that does not have guitar in it, and this does not have guitar in it. So, uh, let's see if he has voice lines this time. Yeah, like, you know, the thing about Hazuma is he's like, they take jazz, you know, piano, that kind of vibe, and then add guitar with it, right? That's, that is overwhelmingly how Blaze Blue does it. And it's, it's more complicated than that. I'm not giving them enough credit, but like, uh, what's his name? Daisuke, I think is his name. Uh, you know, it's a certain style of guitar, a certain pitch of guitar, so there's a very, like, you know, you can kind of, you can really pick it out. Um, but yeah, that's very much their thing. Okay, let's see here. Let's get our MP. Can he break the first health bar? By the way, they should have made this fight harder. What's the point of having the, the, these characters team up? Uh, double guts, by the way. But why have these characters team up and all this stuff and the fight's like a joke battle? Like, what's, what's the point? And again, it's not like, you know, sometimes you have to make things easy because the you know, new players, you don't want new servants they have. And if, they, if they're like upgraded and, and all that, but you're, you're forcing us to use a preset team, so there's no reason to make it this easy. Still doesn't seem like he has voice lines. Either that, or he's just they're too quiet. Like he's roaring and it's really quiet. But I, I don't think he has voice lines. I, I really do like the song though, but uh, I def I, I've seen a lot of people, I hadn't heard it until now, but I heard a lot of people say it was like Blaze Blue, but I'm like, this is absolutely not like Blaze Blue. That's not an insult, but it's just, it's just this is not. Like, I'm very familiar with that guy's style of music, because uh, I really, really like it, and uh, yeah, this is just very different. I mean, it's fine, it's still good music, but... Uh... <laughs> He basically did everything, by the way, there. Brave chain of the NP and that was that. Yeah, if you don't even play this game, this, yeah, this event's easy to get through. The one soundtrack from like Blaze Blue or just Arc System works in general that I don't really like is um what which game was it it's not it's not the last one it was the second to last blaze blue game like from the main series um 
like Chrono Phantasma, because they basically just took all the original music and remixed it to be very like arcadey, and it was awful because they basically you had all these. So originally you had like you know Iron Tiger's theme that you know had like this kind of technical you know vibe that kind of in kind of like that kind of I don't know chill almost vibe that kind of fits the character right. It was so tailored to him, and then it was kind of mixed in with that guitar and stuff. But that was kind of the overarching Blaze Blue vibe, right? And then, you know, uh, you know, Hosma was the piano and more like kind of, you know, jazz classy vibe. But then like the sinister, you know, guitar stuff again with the blaze blue and stuff. But then they, they made all of the songs basically sound the same, right? Instead of each song being very tailored to the character and then having some blaze blue mixed in, every single song had the same vibe because they made all of the remixes have like the, this, you know, the exact same instrumentation and stuff like that and it was awful i hated that so much uh because yeah, everything was just a bunch of, like, of remixes and they weren't even good remixes like it wasn't like a it wasn't like a second take on the song it was like every song is now this take like every single song had the same vibe that that was truly awful i really hated the soundtrack uh from that that's the only time i've ever said that and i, I don't like to be critical of them because i fucking love their music and daisuke is clearly like a genius with music but that was awful like that was really trash like so noticeably bad, and it felt like they were just rushed. They kind of just like did a blanket remix to every single song, and it was it was not great. I mean, there's a different version of the song that would have been the other fight, but there is no fight where you solo with Himiko. That never happens. Like you, you can solo with Himiko if you want to, but. Yep, Grail. So, I'm guessing Vol is asleep right now because she's in Japan and she's sane, and so it would be would not make any sense for her to be around right now. But if she is around right now, can somebody send her a tell on uh, Discord? Because I, I, I'd like to... Oh, okay, yeah, Rex, can you, can you ask her to pop in real quick? Because uh, if she has time, if she's busy, fuck it, this is not important. This is not even remotely important, by the way. So if, if she's doing literally anything, uh, you know, don't jump in the stream. But if she has a second, we could get a... I, I want to see what the, the next stage is called. Like if it's just going to be... Well, it's probably going to be epilogue first anyway, and then there's something after it. So that, that's probably not going to be very helpful anyway. Because it's, it's probably going to be the epilogue for this. Because I know there's like... Somehow they know there's another stage after this one. Although it could just be speculation, I guess. And that might just be the date. I don't know if they're gonna give us any information. I don't know. But I don't maybe that was the epilogue. Uh, yeah, I don't think this looks like it's just gonna be the date. That's not gonna be very helpful. 11 a.m. in Japan? Okay, well, you know, there's that. This is incredibly important. What are you talking about? Yeah, not not so much. Uh, let's go Grail Blood X. Yeah. Oh hi Vol. Yeah, Vol, if you don't mind, could you uh Tell us if this stage right here at the top has literally any information beyond the date. Because, um, you know, people are like, oh, there is going to be a part two. Oh, there's not going to be a part two. And, and, and no one can uh, agree on this. And so I'm kind of wondering if there's literally any uh, hint here. Nope, just the date feels bad. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what it was. Because, yeah, the wiki has it listed as there's a part two. And some people think there's a part two because of the way that the story is. And a lot of people are like, nah, there's no part two. So... Opens at 4 p.m. tomorrow, GST. 6 p.m. Well, that's handy to know. Well, thank you, Vol. I appreciate that. Uh, obviously, this was, like I said, not very important, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if uh, there's a part two or not. Hope uh, Japan is treating you well, though. Okay, it's Blood Axe time. I'm I'm really excited for this. And now we can start working on Babbage. Feels good, man. I might even start 2K foeing him once Gwen's done. I'm not sure.
Good old quarantine. Yeah, I guess it makes sense so that as you travel there, they put you in quarantine. That actually is pretty logical. Obviously, it can be a bit of a bummer, but uh, it's kind of necessary. Yeah, I, I don't know. I might. I don't know. There's a lot of things I want in 2K foe. Like, there's a lot of things I want in 2K foe, so I'm not sure. We'll see. The dreaded level 98. Look, look at this. Look at this. Th this is all maximum XP amounts, right? I'm not giving him any rider gems. It's all berserker gems and all class gems, right? Look at this. That, that, that is fucked. Thankfully, five star embers exist now, so that helps out, but, uh, and it gets worse. I don't know, the next one's worse. I might keep him at 99 for a little bit, uh, just because I think he hits 10k without it. So just to make Gabe happy, we might, I actually, I legitimately don't think I even have a choice in the matter. As good as five star embers are, um, you know, this is barely gonna get me uh, into 99. Like five star embers are three times a four star ember, right? E oh my god. Look at how little that was. Even if we'd got a super, it wouldn't have... That wouldn't have done it anyway. A super wouldn't have done it. Like, no way. That's not even close. That's not even close. Yeah, 99 to 100 is, is bullshit. Well, he got 10k. 12k and 10k. So I'll, I might keep it 99 for like a video. Just to be a shithead. Uh, and then I'll like him 100 later. But, uh... But yeah, I don't have the XP for it anyway. Yeah, it's just too much XP, man. Yeah, so, um, as you can see here, uh, Proto-Ku is, is 2k fode. Like, he's 100% 2k fode. Like, that's why I can't even click him. Um, but then I have, like, a lot of, a lot of people, like, I'm kind of happy. They don't, they don't need to be 2k fode. I kind of like to, I've been spreading them out on this account. So a lot of people are above, like, the norm. Like, you know, she's 1,700, you know, uh, God, they make it so hard to go back. Um, you know, Gills. Up there, I probably should make him a bit higher than that. Uh, and I've been working on Gwen towards 2K now because I actually want him to be 2K for the maximum Buster memes. Um, so I'm not sure what, and I think Achilles is up there. Yeah, Achilles 1,300. Like I kind of just spread them out on this account because it's kind of nice to have a lot of servants be a bit stronger instead of like going maximum on the one, except for Proto Coop because he's like the point of you know he's like the thing. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I might I, maybe I'll get Blood X up to like. Like a chunk up, right? But maybe not all the way 2k po, just like the other ones. I'm not sure. Well, no, I wasn't fat fingering. I always think, because like, in God, this fucking game, you don't understand. You don't, you don't understand. This game is so inconsistent. It's like, in so many menus, you have to click the picture to, to like, not go back and select a different unit, right? Because like if you go uh, so often, if see if you go see you go get back, you're not even in the menu anymore, right? Like if you just want to pick a different craft essence, you have to click the picture because if you hit the back, you know, hitting the back button and going back to the previous menu, that's just too much, right? Hitting the back button for some reason goes back to like the the, the initial menu for some godforsaken reason. That's overwhelmingly how FGO does it, just cause. Right, like just for some reason, if you want to change servant, you have to click the, the the you have to click the pro you have to click the actual servant picture instead of the back button, right? But then in this UI, and I think this UI only, if you do, uh, apply the exact same logic you apply to every other goddamn menu, you click the thing, and it does this for some reason because we needed sideways Gilgamesh, obviously, right? So you know, gr great consistency in this game. Dude, this game, the UI in this game is just, it's a travesty. There's so much, like, if you were going to study this game's UI, like, if you're going to, it, it would just, this is what you would teach people not to do in their games, right? Don't do what this game does. Like, look at command codes. Look, look at command codes. Like, you don't do that. You don't fucking do that. That is, it's so bad. This is, like, the best example of how not to do UI in a game, right? Like, it's, well, it's probably, it's not the best, but it's up there. It's, it's pretty bad. Y'all can match my vertical. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up there. Uh, that was kind of a shorter stream, but I got a few things I want to do, and then I'll do Genshin Impact. Uh, 
Hopefully, we can start doing fun shit soon, though. Uh, once I get a CE drop on this account, we can literally just start doing the main story again, or, you know, Epic of Remnant, or whatever, on the new account and stuff, so... We don't have to do this boring pe- this is hopefully- hopefully this is the last stream of boring crap. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna- I'm gonna, like, farm on this account on the side tonight and tomorrow and stuff, and I'll hopefully get a CE drop, and then we'll never have to do this- this garbage again. But, um... Alright, I'm gonna take a quick break, and then I'll be back with Genshin Impact for those that care. And for everyone else, I'll see y'all later, and, uh, yeah, peace!